Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Speedy. Welcome not to Speedruns. We are here with 6 and 20 Metropolis in City of Mist. Uh, we're back here once again with Team Esper as we return to the crime scene that we were uh, last left left off left off at words. Um, it is good to see everyone here and I am very excited for what goes down today. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by going around to our wonderful cast, uh, starting, as we always do, with Meta. Hi guys, I'm Venomancer. I play Morrigan. Um, I'm excited for today's episode because I've been waiting for it all week and I've been doing a lot of pre-work for it. Um, and I'm nervous about it too. I think I'm having anxiety. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. Uh, I know wrong? of all the things that could possibly happen, and many of them probably will, and so thus I am I'm having anxiety. Um, so it, it's a good anxiety, though. It's like one of those like the positive anxiety things where like, you're nervous because things are about to go down, and you're like excited for it. Um, that kind of anxiety, not the it's I'm going to panic and like start hyperventilating thing. Um, so anyway, yeah, you guys can find me, uh, here on Thursday nights on Friday on my channels, uh, uh, and, uh, on, on Saturday and Sunday on my channel. So, and then I do other stuff. Just follow me on Twitter. It's easier that way. Just, it's fine. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. it for me. Uh, and Trendane, how you doing? Uh, uh, I think Brahms just <laughs> covered. I'm kind of just freaking out a little bit. Um, <laughs> Because the 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 go for <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're the one who did the move. That one? No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you could just tell somebody, oh, clip that and then take up. Right? Um anyway. Go on. Go yeah, on. There go was on. a point. There was a point during that night drinking with with Mr. Bjorn, that I'm certain that Calvin would be taking a sip and would just stretch his tongue all the way around the rim <laughs> of the glass, just staring at her. Anyway, um, so why am I a little freaked out? Uh, because um, I had this GoFundMe uh, fundraiser thing going on uh, that was uh, suggested by somebody who shall remain unnamed. Uh, and it was about halfway through to its goal this morning and I, I made an update around like at noon i don't know exactly when i did it. i think i basically woke up around noon and was like oh look we're halfway there and then like within the span of like two or three hours just suddenly like 800 bucks or more pop and then i'm like ah, ah, ah. am i always doing this thing yeah it was so yeah i guess my trip to seattle is funded and i'm going to be going to the battle tech launch event <laughs> oh my god and I'm playing a, a hocus. No, no. Um, Calvin I had to go through my Rolodex. I almost went for So Kenish next. Now he was drier. The, 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 I'm just McLoken. Go. Hi, I'm McLoken. Uh, I will. Uh, I'm playing Johnny today, and I'm super excited. I know how much I'm. I'm kind of curious on what's going on. So I think Morgan's going to be running most of this episode. So we'll see. That's all I got. I don't. My computer's broken, so I'm kind of fucking with that in the background. Yeah, I the Morgan is is probably gonna dominate this one, and I am so ready for it. I am so ready to figure out what the fuck is going on with Morgan <laughs> for many reasons. Oh God, um, but I am Speedy. This is my channel. You can find me here usually. Um, I just got back from PAX East, which is also why you may have noticed that I no longer have a beard. I was, uh, cosplaying as Luigi for a day or two, uh, and, uh, obviously I, I couldn't have a full beard. That would be ridiculous. Um, and, uh, today I am playing as Giovanni, or Gio, the bartender who has been accompanying this little troop along with whatever it is that we're trying to do right now, um, and investigating this crime scene. Um, and before we turn things over to our MC to lead the night, uh, just a few couple quick announcements. Uh, make sure, if you haven't already, there's a tweet out. Make sure to retweet it. 
let everyone know you're here. Come, come hang out. Uh, all that good stuff. Um, also, if you haven't already, uh, go follow on YouTube, uh, both on my personal YouTube and on the Six and Twenty YouTube. Uh, you can find uh, you can find out uh, you know all the all the previous episodes on there. Um, Along with on the Six and Twenty YouTube, you can find a playlist that includes all of the other channels, YouTubes, um, as well as Beyond the Mist, our behind-the-scenes show that we have here, uh, hosted by the wonderful Mick Loken. Um, last episode that came out, what was that about? You had some people on it. Uh, moves sets. Uh, so the core moves and the cinematic moves. Yeah. So it's about moves. So those of you who are interested in learning a little bit more about the moves that go on in City of Mist, if you've been watching this game and wondering what the hell we're doing, what does it mean when we're, we're saying, uh, you know, investigate or hit it with all you got? Have we hit it with all we got? Has that been a thing we've done? A uh, lot. I've done it. Yeah, yeah, you did. I have actually have dynamite in it. Oh, yeah. Dynamite! Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was terrible. Why did I do that? That was a terrible thing. Yeah, I, do I don't know, but I love that you did it. I, I was trying to come up with a pun to help fix that, but I couldn't. Uh, you, so. You're coming out of your no, shell, There's no fixing that. I think that I think that you should be proud of that. No! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Anyways. I mean, like, a couple weeks ago you were doing voices, like, now you're saying dynamite? Listen, I think it's a step in the right direction. Wait a minute, no, that's not a good idea, because his name is Jimmy Walker, and everybody in this game named Walker dies. <laughs> so, what, why would you be talking about Gerald Walker's father like that? James <laughs> Walker was a great man. He served in World War II. And he's dead. <laughs> that's well, who told you that? I think it was in Valkyrie. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, on that note, let's turn things over to Johnny, uh, our DM, to uh, start us off, recap us on what went on last week, and uh, kick things off here. Hey, man, I'm tweeting. Give me a break. No. It's okay, uh, fine. Whatever. Or... Don't. <laughs> we'll play without you. Well, Team everybody, wins. so I'm... I'm... I'm just going to point out that everybody's introduction so far today either involved excitement, nervous anxiety, or frustration, which bodes for some really great role playing tonight. Because typically, when I see that around the table, people just step up and bring that into the game. And holy shit, I think we're going to have another night where there's going to be so much RP going on that it's going to be ridiculous. I'm just going to state that. that. You left Say what? One, you left out one thing. You said nervous, what's that? You, left it, you said nervous anxiety. And uh, excitement, and frustration, and, and frustration. But you didn't list anticip. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Thank you. <laughs> I also have a contribution to this discussion. What's that? What's black and white and red all over? Get out. <laughs> the newspaper. That's what's up. I'm out of here. That's actually what I was going to say. But I thought, no, it can't be that one. It has to be something else. <laughs> oh. so I'm going to go with a slaughtered zebra. Oh my uh, fuck. That was good. Um, yeah. you know, I wasn't okay. expecting that because that's the, that's the correct answer to that joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and while I was in the shower the other day, I was thinking about the dictionary joke that you told. That was... <laughs> Why are you... It just Your shower out. thoughts are really interesting. I'm just going to say that now. Everybody has their best thoughts in the shower. <laughs> Obviously, it's the stuff yeah. that I make up. Okay. Right. Exactly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have I, I, because you said that, and because I, I, I completely agree. I have to share this. I actually worked for a company who CEO from his previous company. He made a hell of a lot of money. The first thing he did was he got it. He bought a new house and he had it built directly to his specifications. Each shower in the place he had three had three to five shower heads. Because and they had benches in them because that's where he did his best thinking and he would often spend two and three hours in the shower doing his like thinking and I was like this is ridiculous but the older I get I'm like okay I get it but I get it but what does he need three showers for like can't he just because he the was same a big one? house and he had guests but he wanted they to don't all access need to, to think any like shower that. if. All right, Whatever. I'm just Listen. I'm just gonna do the recap because this is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. out of control. All right, 
So, previously on 6 and 20 Metropolis. Dun dun. Murder. Mayhem. A crime scene. Morgan gets a call from Derek Roth claiming that Phoebe Dere is dead and that they are currently investigating, investigating the crime scene. However, on arriving, so many things begin to remind her of a gruesome and bloody different murder. And she's concerned and uh, curious. And so between her, Gio, and uh, Johnny, they investigate both the inside crime scene and the exterior circumstances where they find one witness uh, who Johnny feeds a number of hamburgers to in exchange for information about uh, a particularly unusual individual individual who was had a van and was outside of the building the previous day. Gio works the crowd, found out that none of the gangs were involved in this particular situation, and Morgan worked the crime scene inside, discovering a number of really interesting and gruesome facts about the murder. The body was frozen after death, or the body was frozen. It was frozen at the time, or it, the, the death came because of the, the freezing process. Body parts were cut in one smooth chop using a cleaver. While that was investigation was going on, Cal was having his own peculiar, peculiar, peculiarity. That's it. Uh, unusual situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was dealing with uh, a conversation uh, that he was invited to by Harold Bjorn, which, with whom he turns out the meeting was with his sister, Trisha Bjorn. It was the discussion about the circumstances around who should take chairmanship of the Walker Foundation. Back and forth negotiation, Cal plays the patient intermediary until an, an unusual change of circumstances happened, presenting Cal with an unusual offer. It should be Cal that takes the chairmanship, becomes the chairman of the board for the nonprofit Walker Foundation. And that's where we left Cal as we retransition back to the investigation as Gio, Johnny, and Morgan get back together uh, after Gio discovers a little bit of information that becomes incredibly relevant. There are freezers unused since the business that was last in that warehouse closed found in the basement. When Morgan and Gio and Johnny go down to those freezers, they begin to investigate, taking a look in one incredibly large freezer that is multi-chambered. And as we come into this, as we begin to focus in into the scene here, we see Gio and Morgan moving forward in one room, in one chamber of this large freezer. As the mist and the, the frozen air and the, 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 the mist vapor, the water vapors kind of coalesce and begin to part ways as they step forward to the back of this area freezing cold around them, but I doubt that they feel it as they step forward and they discover the severed head of Sydney White. And that's where we fade in. That ain't Phoebe. Um, so Morgan doesn't respond, Geo. She appears to have herself frozen, pun intended. Um, and she is staring at this head from a distance um, as the phone in her hand that she was using previously as a light starts to tumble out and hits the floor. Uh, I would like to do a flashback. Excellent. So set the scene for us in this flashback. Yeah, okay. So uh, the scene, um, it's kind of almost like it appears through Morgan's eyes. You never actually see her. She's looking down at an envelope that's been left on her desk uh, in her office. And on the front of it just says Morgan in nicely written letter. And she opens it. And inside um, it reads, I'm sorry, I can't. Please don't look for me. And then it's signed with just a cursive lettered S. And the next scene, pan camera with Morgan grabbing her keys from her desk and rushing out the door, getting into her, her car, 
making phone calls, um, just a bunch of different things happening all at once. It's like flashes of moments happening through Morgan's mind as it cuts to later part of the day where she drives up to um, Tinseltown and proceeds beyond as the pathways kind of lead up into the hills side where Olympus is. And she goes into the Olympus neighborhood and pulls over to one of the side uh, areas where a private home is, a very large, beautiful, intricate private home with a uh, gated entry. And she, you watch her as you know she's speaking to somebody at the front and they let her in and she walks into the home and inside there's a woman and a young girl and Morgan walks up to her and to the woman's surprise, of course, Morgan being there, it was none other than Sydney herself. Uh, she tries to argue. Um, she's arguing with this woman um, in, in a manner of pleading, not in anger, but pleading for her help. Morgan's asking for Sydney's help in this. And she, she says, please, you need to help me do the right thing. And Sydney is completely unmoved by her by her words, by Morgan's actions and words, and, and notes that she has to keep her daughter safe. And uh, you can see that there is a sadness in Morgan's eyes as the camera is now not in her first person a perspective, but now looking at the scene overall. And it's almost as if Morgan's about to cry, but something changes. And that sadness turns to rage. And she takes a moment and recollects herself. And it's very obvious that Sydney is confused by the next things that Morgan says, but she specifically notes, you need to disappear, change everything, change your hair, change your eyes with con whatever you need to do, you need to disappear. You can't be Sydney anymore. Do everything you can, ignore anything that you see on the news. What's next to come is for the greater good. And Morgan, you know, just kind of looks at Sydney's daughter and has kind of a glimmer of hopefulness in her eye. Like she knows the decision she's making is going to be the right path. As the camera fades, Morgan is now walking down a dark alley and as she steps into the light, she emerges as Sydney and she walks into the police station. That's the end of the flashback. Okay, so just for, for a little bit of a, a awareness for everybody, mechanically speaking, uh, Meta and I had talked previously about this from respect to Morgan. This, while the flashback move is typically considered uh, you know, a single scene and can only be done once, given the dramatic nature of this story, we're going to tell it out. We're going to tell it in, in chunks or pieces, and so there, there's going to be multiple um, flashback scenes uh, or spotlight scenes for Morgan as that happens. Um, bringing it back into focus to the present from a mechanical perspective, now you get one juice or you get one clue just by spinning the, by doing that. You you can take either you want. Based on your based on your description, I can see it coming out either, and you can either spend it now or you can spend it later, um, depending upon how this, the scene progresses and that kind of a thing. So, I'm gonna, I'm going to leave that option up to you at this point. But I just wanted to to you know to kind of bring that in, you know bring that, those mechanical elements into focus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to probably hold on to. It. I want to see what happens in the next you know see part of the scene. But um, yeah. So Geo, you see like this stun and then. Morgan's phone crashes to the ground um, and she's just standing there, not moving and not saying anything. Oh, you, you okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Um, if you're looking at Morgan's face, the uh, tears that have come out of her eyes have frozen over on her cheeks. Um... Geo, I, I bend down to pick up the phone uh, that you dropped and I try and put it in your hand and I put my arm around your shoulder and I try to lead you out of the freezer. Okay, she, she walks with you without saying anything. I was kind of like clutching onto her phone. 
she's shaking and you're not sure if it's from the the cold or if it's from what she just saw yeah um i basically lead uh lead you out back to where johnny is um i i uh I don't know what's wrong with her, but but she's not all right. Ho- hold on, watch her for a second. Uh, th- what? Um, and I run back inside and I uh, try and take a few pictures of the head of Sydney White uh, at a few different angles to try and get a good kind of grasp of it. But I don't, don't want to touch anything. Um, what do you What are you trying to do by taking those pictures? I mean, is this a is this something that like that? Is for you know for to lead to an investigation later, or is this something where you want to investigate in the moment? I, or are you looking for something else? I think right now I want to save this so it, it can be investigated later. I, I think Morrigan needs to get out of here, and I don't want to spend any more time here than I have to. Okay, that makes sense. So, taking a picture of the the head and kind of the scene around it, um, and just sort of. Uh, dipping into the other rooms to take pictures really quickly as I do. If there's anything obvious I see in the other rooms, I would try and take note of that too. But And there okay. and there there is two other freezers, right? So there are two other freezers, yes. They are smaller freezers based on the door size. This was the first one. Okay. Wait, was this was it did this one freezer also have multiple rooms, or was it? Yeah, there was multiple. It was. It was. There was a. There was a large entryway with a like a like a a, a preparation table of some kind, or like a, a staging table of some kind. And there were three chambers that kind of left off to it, you know, or left that kind of like led out from there, which made give it the sense of it being a larger. So like there were three different sub chambers or rooms that were attached to this. Um, like if you've ever, vestibules. Right there, it's just this. It's just because some commercial features have multiple, you know, locks or chambers, kind of a thing. So, um, uh, so only two of the rooms been searched so far, right? Uh, no, all three. They found the they found the head in the third one. Okay, so the the head was in the right one. I don't like. There's nothing in the, the first the uh, the Ford one and the the right one. Right. So the right one and the one the straight ahead were not. There was nothing in them. It was the third one. They had to um, actually step inside to invest, you know, to see each of these, and there was nothing obvious. There was not any. There was it, nothing. There was nothing left in there. Uh, so is Geo coming out? Yeah. Uh, so I, I bring Morgan out. Um, I like kind of like guide her along, and I'm like, ah, here we go. Because I, I don't know if she's like catatonic or what. What is she? You're muted. Yeah, she's she's not responding. She's she's moving. If you're like kind of bring her along, but she's not doing anything of her own. Okay, uh, so I'll like bring her uh, like outside with Geo, and then I'll run up to the like to to the other girls. Like, just watch her quick, and then like I'll open the one locker and see if I uh, see anything in there. Um, I don't know if you want me to roll investigate or if there's anything in there. Um, no, this room, this one is much smaller. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's definitely like the size of like a 10 by 10 kind of a locker and you can mm-hmm. see that there are shelving you know kind of lining all the sides uh there is uh nothing obvious in there if you want to roll and investigate um this is this is one of the weird things about this um this particular game is it's not there there are definitely be obvious but the specific act of investigating this particular chamber may not reveal it so if you want to roll a general investigation for the the basement area we'll just call it that and we'll just we'll describe okay. you kind of searching around um so let's do uh beat them at everything if someone's trying to hide something uh to go all the way and indomitable and impressive um i gotta make sure because i'm on a different setup so i have to make sure i click all the right things um, make sure that uh, that you're all. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, who did you leave Morgan with? Geo. Geo. Okay. Uh, none of my weaknesses apply. Um, so I'm gonna roll. Are you sure you're not sorely under under underpaid? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm messing. I'm messing around with you. Go ahead. Uh, investigate. Hold on. Let me see this as it happens. Investigate. Boop. 
Nine. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So four clues, uh, vague or otherwise. Like the, you may, you might find half truths, or there there might be vagueness. They're not um, going to be sure fa surefire facts. Every single one of them was. Uh... I, I literally don't know because I was just like hoping to find something. Um, so you could there... you could say that if you want to if you want a general indicator of where there's something going on, you absolutely don't find anything right around the freezers. However, there are a couple of other rooms that are like preparing areas or staging areas. You find interesting things there. Okay, um, what do I find in there? You find what appears to be leaves and dead sort of not plants so much as dead um, plant life. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, is uh, open... You can, and you can ask me questions about that using your four if you want, or other things about that. Uh, well, what I'm going to do right now before I ask questions and figure, uh, figure what I want to do or investigate it further later, uh, I'm going to take empty sandwich bags that I had uh, because Johnny didn't want to litter after he finished like sandwiches. Uh, and he's going to put some of the leaves and stuff in there uh, and seal it up. Uh, Are you a Boy Scout? I never asked that question. Uh, no, but he's a hell of a sailor. So he... Uh, <laughs> um, they have Sea so, Scouts. <laughs> sea Scouts, yes. Uh, so he's uh, basically uh, doing that. And then um, he's looking around the room for uh, anything that seems out of place or recently uh, been moved. Uh, even though we're in somewhere cold, they do it does collect dust. Uh, it's, it's frozen, but it's very obvious when someone moves something, especially if there's like a lot of frost buildup around an item. Um, is, there, is there something similar to that? Like someone's been in here very recently and they... Um, did something? Which freezer are you talking about? Are you talking about the big one or are you talking about the smaller ones? Uh, the, the the prepping areas. The Oh, sorry, the prepping areas. Um, yeah. No, it's not recent. There are definitely, um, there are signs of movement, mm -hmm. but they're not, I mean, they're, it's not like, it's not obviously it's been in the last 24 hours or in the last week, right? You do find that with these vines, uh, these, these things that are just kind of on the ground, these leaves and vines and thorns and all of that. Um, there, you know, there has been movement in the past. You see different layers or distributions of dust and disturbance, but it's not anything recent. Okay. Um, so that's one question. Yeah. Or that's uh, one clue. Uh, you, uh -huh. you can also bank these specifically to ask questions about the scene later on. If, it, if you want to make it relevant. I, I'm, I'm willing to do that because... Because we are pressed for time, and I don't think... John, Johnny is, like, literally, like, gathering these vines he found. I don't think that you're pressed for time yet. I don't think Morgan let anybody know that there was things going on down here just yet. And according to the way that the investigation was going for the officers, they were only beginning to explore the rest of the, um, the warehouse at this point. Yeah, but we don't know how long we have until someone shows up down here and we have to kind of like also wipe shit down because we don't want uh, shit to come back at us, you know? I, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't know anything about that. I, I wasn't planning to use that against you at all. I will say this though, that Morgan did say when she brought you guys all down here that to use like your sleeves and stuff to not leave fingerprints. So at least she got you prepped on that. Mm -hmm. Johnny is wearing a t-shirt. This is, of uh, course. So yeah, but like, then you like use this. the bottom of their shirt like that, remember? Yeah. No, see, yeah, when, <laughs> when you um, first said pulling out the sandwich bags, I figured those were going on your hands. <laughs> sandwich hands. <laughs> well, to pick up to pick up the things, yeah, it would be on his hand, like in the, the shows when they like pick something up and they wrap it up. Uh, he would pick up those vines. Um, is there, does it look like there's blood down here? Blood sickles. Blood in the preparing rooms outside of the uh, the freezers. Is that what you're asking? Um, where are yeah. you looking for blood? I'm looking for blood uh, in the uh, uh, the, the prepping area. 
inside the freezer or in the other rooms outside of the freezer? Uh, I would do both. Like, I would okay. look very quickly and be like, is there blood? Like, is there something weird here? You do not see any blood inside of the freezers other than what is directly around or just under. Like, there's a little bit of blood that you can see visible under the head if you were to go looking at it. It's still, right, there, there's there's a little bit of redness. It's not a lot. And that should, you know, that that's based on the, the, the way that it was presented and everything. However, going into the other rooms where you see these this this these plant life debris, this these dead plants and that kind of a thing, mm -hmm. there are clearly brown spots in the area around, sometimes in the dust, and sometimes, you know, in the areas that have been moved. Like where there's less there's more there's less dust, there's been more activity, but there's there's clearly brown spots. That could be blood. Okay. If you've ever seen blood hit concrete and have it dry and kind of start to age. Um, yeah, so what I, I'm going to do, um, is, uh, I can't really take samples of that because I don't really think, oh, I do have my finger, but I don't want to get like my finger and like scrape up fucking cement with all this shit. Huh? I was going to say, do you have a knife or something else that you can scrape into one of your plastic baggies? I do probably, I, um... I'm just. Actually, I, 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 would, I would have a uh, a screwdriver uh, for my electronics tools. Uh, so like a flat tip. So he would like take part of that and like kind of scrape up some cement uh, and like chip up cement and like put that in one of his baggies. Um, he would. Uh, I'm trying to. I wonder. Like, what do you, you guys think? We should bank the other three or two clues that we have. This is going to be two later. Huh. This is going to be two now because you've got you've you found okay. the vines and then you found the blood that was around the vines. Uh, bank the two other clues until later. Well, you you can't bank them past the scene, right? Yeah. Well, okay. So here's what I'm here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm going to suggest in this particular case. He can bank them only because uh, there's still more to be done in the scene, or there's certain more to be to, like evaluated from the scene. So. Um, Maybe it's he remembers something, but it's I, the farther we get away from the scene, the more vague the answers are going to be. But well, I, okay. I uh, if anyone has any clues that they want to figure out right now, please let me know. Um, but we have two clues left if you guys want to use that. I mean, the simple question is what are the plants i guess but i don't know that that's i feel like helpful. we can investigate that later yeah exactly he's already got he's got yeah he's got samples yeah. of that so you're gonna be able to figure that out later Absolutely. um i don't know I, I don't know other than what else do you think johnny would look for um well he doesn't know he does, he's not going in the room with the head he wouldn't go in there uh just because that would freak him the fuck out um so if he does like he would the this is his character. We didn't he, specifically it, say that there was a head in a specific room. <laughs> yeah. All all I did was bring Morrigan out and say that she was like not okay right now. So if Johnny if Johnny does like walk in and see a head in a room, he'd be like, woo, 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 and like run out of there, and then um, ah, ooh, okay, and then uh, and then be like, oh, what, what the fuck. <laughs> Are you, are you saying that to me? Yes. Yeah. 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 We know. That. Okay. Thank you for acting casual about that. What the fuck? Uh, listen. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is right? All right. We need to get out of here. Uh, Morgan, are you? Any response? Uh, okay, so I'm Johnny gonna... in, a, in a fever. Uh, he would look for. Um, is there any? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Um, so seeing the head, now he would be like, okay, so the head was either placed there or she was killed here, or and we're kind of it's a is it a butcher warehouse? No, it's not a butcher warehouse. It is. You, you, are you talking about the business previously that was here? 
Uh, I mean, like, uh, I know it's a warehouse. I didn't, it has lockers. I didn't know, like, it'll just, you know, naturally observing, is it look like it used to be, like, there's, like, hooks where, they, you know, they hung a meat and shit, or? There look like there are implements for that, but it wasn't, the last thing it was used for was not for, for, for meat, right? It okay. was a food, it was a food packaging place, and there are obviously places where there, you would see that there's an indication of, like, previously, at one point, this place could have been a, you know, a meat packing facility for that, or, you know, for, you know, or meat, a meat treat, you know, kind of prep facility or whatever, or butchery. I, or I, have, kind of I have a question. This is one of my clues. Um, what company, when was the Freon last filled for the freezers? That's a really good question. How do you go about figuring that out? I'm just going to, I'm curious about this prior to, you know, um, there prior should, to answering there because... should be a, a wall thing uh, that indicates uh, what company fills the Freon and what one's the last date and who's the uh, person, the uh, guy uh, who filled it, the sign off on it. The technician. Yeah. Okay, you step over to where that would be the case. Mm -hmm. All of that information is incredibly dated. However it's very clear that it has been filled recently. Like it's, it's very clear that there is no dust and that the, the equipment has been conditioned such that it, you know, to put it back into operation. What's Everything the, else about that indicates that it's, you know, it's been a while since anybody has officially touched it. Like we're so talking a good 10 years. What is the company? Uh, and, uh, so what, what's the company day and agent or a technician that did this? Oh, you're going to make me come up with something that really is not relevant? Sure. Okay. Ten years ago, <laughs> it was... Um, uh, not ten years ago. The, the most recent one. Ten years ago. Ten years ago is the most recent one? That's what, I'm, that's what I said. That oh, documented okay. wise, that's the most recent one. But it's obvious yeah. that it wasn't the recent one. The other one was done undocumentedly. Right. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry if yeah. I wasn't being clear, but yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's okay. Um, so Johnny's you, Johnny's just like, but uh, putting a new Freon without signing off on it—that's illegal. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> well, Mister. Um, Goddamn so, boy, detective. Um, uh, is that a clue? Um. Yes, but it's um. It's a whole. It's a cold hard fact because of the way you described how you would go and do it. Okay. Um, um, it's it's it is a fact that somebody has clearly been maintaining this, uh, and I don't know. You could probably it, dust for prints. I, I don't have dusting print things. Uh, well, your boy detective. I expect you to have everything. I don't have a utility belt where I'm like bat hook and then like shoot. Yeah, he doesn't have a CSI off. kit. Just like. Yeah. Hanging around in his back. You mean you don't have shark repellent? Uh, I don't. My fist. <laughs> that's. Uh, uh, are you telling me that that he can't pick up some like like break out some concrete and grind it down to a fine powder in his fist and then use that to? Yeah, but what would he do with it? That's the other thing. He doesn't that's have not my a, tape. To, like, <laughs> well, wait. Do you have any? Do you have any uh, scotch tape? Can you make no. a rudimentary lathe? <laughs> No, uh, you, you take some Scotch tape. You do like Eddie Murphy did in the River on Beverly Hills Cod. You just put some I, Scotch I, tape over it. and. Then <laughs> okay, this is what I want to do. Now, the place that looks like, what what in here looks like it's recently been touched? Because to fill the Freon, he would have had to touch something. Oh, yeah, he, he would have. You can see that the valve, that the tank has been, you know, cleaned up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. That the that the valve uh, has definitely been, you know, kind of not polished, but like dusted off and made sure that the, the fitting was secure. You can see that the, the tank indicator indicates that it's mostly full. Um, you can't tell how long ago it was filled or um, how long they were turned on unless you were to do, there was a, there's a, there's a separate thing you could do investigation wise, like to go and figure that out. That's a, but, that's a... but it's obvious that it, the tank is still relatively full and that it was recent, you know, very recent. Everything is really, you know, everything that is directly related to the Freon and the, the way that you would fill it and the valve indicator, the, the meter, all of that appears to be cleared off. Like wiped out. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Like it was like they were trying to they were trying to work on it to to to, to let it go. You don't know if there's there's any um, any fingerprints or anything on it because you don't know how well it's been wiped down. You just know that that was definitely an area that has been interacted with more recently than some other parts of the the warehouse. So Johnny would take uh, break off the 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 crank of the valve. He would put his two fingers on the bottom of it with the with the or actually take out the a baggie and put his uh, baggie around it. And he would break off the valve uh, and then uh, put it in the bag. Now the valve, like he wouldn't be like breaking the valve where it's like leaking out. He'd break off the tip of the valve where it would it, like you, you would just need something like to crank it shut, uh, such as like a wrench or something like getting the valve itself. Okay. Um, so I, I want to take that as a clue. Um, so I'm going to conclude that as your third clue. That's yeah. your third clue. All of that. Um, as well as with, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, the dangerous light bulb time. Huh? You said, I tried to think and I said, dangerous time. yeah, I know. Um, the, the only other thing I could think of is that the, the lights must be recent. Um, do the lights look recent? Do the lights look recent? Do you mean that the, have they been replaced? Like the, yeah. the light bulbs and everything have been replaced? No, they do not look like they've been replaced. And I'm not going to call that a clue because that would be obvious. Okay. Um, so no one replaced the light bulbs. I'm trying to think in a warehouse, what, what will we see? Um, and I'm trying to see where he would have messed up putting, like touching something when they didn't mean to touch it. Um, and uh, I'm going to, oh, that's a tough one. Because I got the handle. There might be like a partial on there. I don't know. Um, but I'm also going to, uh, uh, is there uh, any uh, empty like Freon tanks around? I'm going to consider this still a part of your third clue because it would be obvious. Okay. Unless you go to, unless you want to go investigate the trash. No, there's not any, any tanks around specifically. Uh, oh yeah. And then, okay. And then my fourth clue would be looking in the trash. Cause okay. So you'd have to go out, you'd have to go outside for the trash. So just FYI. Oh, it's outside. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, like it's, I don't, if we're going outside, we're leaving. Uh, we're not, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, I got to look at this dumpster. And the cop's like, what are you doing there? So I'm be like, oh, I'm dumpster type. Don't mind me. Ah! Um, so uh, within the bounds of where we're at currently, um, the stair, there's stairs leading up to this. Or uh, this is a, is it like a uh, uh, truck depot? Like trucks pull up? Yes, there, there, are, there is definitely a loading dock and a, a, you know, a shipping and receiving kind of is area. There, is there any recent activity and the door? Like someone... Uh, oh, yeah. Um, is there uh, anything by the door that looks very like uh, either like blood or uh, clothing or someone, someone accidentally dropped something uh, by there and they didn't realize it? No, but it, they did not cover up the fact that there was a uh, a commercial vehicle that had come into that warehouse. Okay. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that a commercial vehicle had come in, and they didn't they didn't hide the fact that the the door was used, and that something was definitely brought in and loaded in. Is there since this place is old, is there an obvious place someone touched on the side of the wall? Yes. Um, am I able to... Does it look like they left a fingerprint? No. But I don't know if I'll be able to tell that. Um, yeah, without taking... You could take a picture of it and, and add that as a part of the investigation, right? 
yeah, uh, I would I would take a picture of it. Um, uh, and then uh, that would be the fourth clue. Um, right, that there was there was definitely activity. There was commercial. There was com activity of a commercial vehicle coming in and out of the loading dock. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So okay, and then uh, I would uh, look at uh, Geo and Morgan, who's still like fuck time. He's like, all right, let's go. I, you, you, you sure you, you searched everything? Well, yeah, I, I found as much as I could. I, we'll go over it later, but I, 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 these cops suck because they're not even down here yet. Yeah, yeah. We should probably get out of here before they come looking. Uh, but, I mean, they're going to be looking for Morgan, aren't they? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I think we should just get her out of here because... She's, I don't know. She, uh, the, what yeah, the fuck's wrong that. with her? You think you, you think someone who's killed someone would be like fine with looking at a head? Yeah, you would think so, wouldn't you? All right. Um, and you'd think that she would be mad after you saying something like that. Yeah, so she is fucked up. Uh, so, uh, all right, uh, and I'm gonna peek out the door to see if anyone's around. Uh, you can see two plain clothes, or no, sorry, two uniformed officers who are heading towards the far side of the building, away from you. Okay. So you you can there's there's an opportunity for you to leave if you need to. Uh, I was like, uh, this is a good time for us to leave. Okay, let's let's go quick. And then uh, Johnny will actually cover up his like mouth like this, uh, and like begin to run out. Well, not run out, but like sneak out, uh, because he want he wants uh, just in case. This is a if something happens, I got to cover. Uh, so um, he uh, are we uh, are we going to go the same way we came? We're going to jump up to the roofs and. Because John, Johnny will take both of you. Like, he will pick up Morgan and then have you get on his back and then jump up. Um, sure. Let's go with that. Okay. Uh, so Johnny's, like, holding uh, Morgan and uh, Geo's on his back, and he's like, ah! All right, so you get you get onto the top of a, the, uh, an adjacent building. Mm -hmm. And then I'm assuming that's where you exit the scene and make your way to where. What time is it? It's probably uh, around uh, after eight now. <sighs> um, uh, I would recommend um, back room of the Queen of Hearts. Skip the front entrance. Don't let anyone see this time. Although it might be a little bit busy there. It's eight o'clock. What day is it? I believe it's, it's Sunday for you guys. Or is it, is it you guys still on day four? It's yeah. Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh, Saturday it's night then. So we can't go. Okay. Yeah, that's probably so, because that's busy um, at eight o'clock. Um, uh, her office? Do you think she'd let us in? I mean, we, we just need to put her fingerprint on the door, right? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. She had too much to drink. Look at her. And, like, this tiny <laughs> little boy is carrying this grown-ass woman all around the town now. He's, he's still holding her. Um, I mean, let's, we, should get a, we should get an Apollo a couple blocks away. Her yeah. car's there. Remember? Oh. Her car is there. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is there. Um, if you guys leave it there, I'm just saying it's probably a bad idea. Just, uh, you know, because police car and her yeah, car. No, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take your keys. <laughs> Abandoning it there. <laughs> I, I, I could have remembered from last session that you actually had your car yeah, there. Yeah, so yeah. I, I would uh, I would uh, go, uh, jump, like, bring it to the car and, like, be holding her, but make sure we're not seen. Because if the cops do see me carrying her, they're going to be like, oh, that tiny boy is trying to kidnap that woman uh, <laughs> that we obviously all know because she's worked with us many cases. So, um, 
yeah, kind of going the long way around and then like kind of uh, getting the keys off of her somehow um, and giving him the geo uh, as he like puts her in the back seat to make and like sits with her uh, Johnny would uh, in the back seat to make sure she's like okay and stuff. Yeah, uh, buckles her in and she's like, okay, we're going for a ride. Are, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, I would take her phone. And do you have a fingerprint lock, or is it a code? Oh, uh... Fingerprint. Okay, then I'm going to unlock your phone and quickly send a text to Derek, uh, just saying, heading home, we'll report back in the morning. Does it work? The fingerprint unlock doesn't work. Shit! (laughs) What? Oh, no. Wait, oh, no. Uh Uh-huh. I know why it doesn't work, but I can't say anything. I think I know why it doesn't work, too. What? Wait, okay, say it, though, because I want to hear what people's theories are. Uh, Not you, Mick Wilkin. Uh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're not... You you change shapes or whatever. You're someone else now. Yeah, that was my thought, too. Yep. Um, Um... the question so is, would I, I have realized that in character? That. Okay, with that knowledge, uh, <laughs> what's wrong? Uh, the, the fingerprint sensor on a phone, it's not working. Um, You've seen it unlock it like this, right? Yeah. The hell? Maybe, oh, some... I, maybe we can't get into her apartment. It's a good Office question. Wait, she can change into a bird. What if she uses her co-fingerprint <laughs> on, the, on the thing? <laughs> Are, uh, are Morgan's eyes open still? Yeah, they're okay. open. She's just, like, not responsive to outside stimuli right now. Okay. Then, like, just kind of sitting in the car, um... I guess, uh, Gio would climb into the back seat so that he's he's next to you. Um, and you, you just kind of... You want me to drive? Who's gonna drive? I was gonna say. We're not. We're not going anywhere yet. We I don't can't even know stay where here, going. dude. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Just drive, and we'll figure something out on the way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll hop back <laughs> in the driver's it's seat. It's really weird with two guys and a girl in a backseat of a car. You're in front of a crime scene. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Um. LiveJasmine.com. Save <laughs> <after> dark. <laughs> Um, swipe left, swipe left, swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> um, what abandoned places do we know? Places to go. Uh, All right, Cal's office. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna let you guys figure it out in chat, and we're gonna cut to Cal as you guys. That way, either you guys don't, you know, continue on for another ten minutes yep. trying to figure yep. out where you're going. So, Geo starts the vehicle up. It's an amazing vehicle, as you have driven or been in it before, but now you get to drive it. So plan wisely, and we're going to cut to Cal. I'm sorry, what? Is what Cal says to Patricia. I believe the offer's on the table, uh, Cal. (sighs) We would like you, or I should say, I think you are the only choice given the circumstances and the way you've handled this situation so far, I think you're the only choice to take over as chairman. You'll serve my brother's needs in whatever capacity that he believes. I think you are a, and she stresses this word, man of character and can be trusted with the people that the foundation is there to protect. It's important to me that this job goes to the right person. And clearly my brother has put some level of trust in you and you can handle his bouts of anger. And at that you see just Harold even more red, grabbing for the drink in front of him and just continuing to to consume. Like he just drinks another whole glass of whatever it is he's drinking, probably ale. I realize I'm putting you on the spot, she says. 
And it's not an easy decision. I should hope not. If you'd like more details, I'm sure that both my brother and I can provide whatever context you need, or we can contact the foundation and they can provide you insight into any questions that you might have. But obviously, you didn't get a chance to lead the charge to be responsible and to be the leader that you were for your own business. And I'm aware of the circumstances of that. When your my brother said that you were going to be here tonight, I figured I'd do a little research and understand the man that I would be talking to. I liked that man on paper, and now I'm I like the man I see in front of me. Then we would have to make absolutely certain that the woman, that being Chauvin, gets nowhere near this uh, if, and I stress if, we go this way because she revels in taking things from people. I believe I can point her in another direction for her appetites. So long as there are others, she won't turn her eyes to me. <clears throat> Mr. Bjorn. Please understand that I choose my words very carefully when I say this, but I also want you to understand how honest I am about to be with you. Every time you reach for that glass, you prove her point a little bit further. Now you ask me here initially to represent your interests. And the more of a beat you become with every word that falls from her lips, the more you prove to me that you don't really know what your interests really are. You know what you think they are, but as you have brought me here to represent your best interests, I think she may be right. You would do best, as much as this might be against your greater nature, to stand in the wings and make suggestions, but to rely upon me to do exactly what you really hired me to do, which is to get her here and negotiating. And that has been done. With this, I have proven that I can represent your genuine best interests and not what you perceive them to be. If, and again, I stress if, we go with this plan, I will be the middle ground between the two of you. I will work for both of your best interests to find what is best for the Walker Foundation, for your corporation, and whatever. <laughs> like the whatever. You can see that as you're speaking to him, at first, again, he's angry, and the, even his hands are beat red. But as you begin to, to convey all of this, you see that the anger recedes and he becomes calmer. And you see, even though he's, he's looking down at his, his, his drink, you can see a smile begin to crawl across his face. And he slowly looks up and he's first he's looking at Trisha. And then he turns to you and he says, do you really understand what she is offering you? What responsibility this truly is? No, which is why I would take her up on her offer to provide more information before I made a decision. Just make sure that she doesn't withhold anything. That's why I have you. Clearly you think little of my character if you believe that the only reason I brought you here was self-interest. I wouldn't say that I think little of your character. I would say I don't know enough about it yet. Which is part of why I have her. 
Trisha's interests are her own. She does not seek to serve the foundation's recipients of its benefits any more than I do. At least not in the way that she is saying. So, fine. You do what you need to do. You take your time, but not too much. I need a decision very shortly because otherwise I have to make other plans. I do have one other question. If I do accept this responsibility, what becomes of the sisters? I'm not sure how that's relevant. You have seen the uh, the news over the last few days, I presume. I am not fully convinced that they were abducted. And he just kind of glances over at Patricia for a moment and then you know, <laughs> kind of back and looking. He's like, <clears throat> I, I want to know where they are. I want to know what their situation is, and I want to know what their situation will be if I take on this role. He leans in and smiles at you again. I don't know where they are. That question wasn't. I would like, I would like to know where they are myself. As for their well-being, other than a business relationship that might be hostile. I like Phoebe. Her sisters are good friends to the family. And I don't want them hurt any more than you do. They, and he takes a sip of his drink. They factor into what comes next. And he leans back and he smiles at Trisha, ignoring you. And Trisha kind of speaks up at the implied question to both of them. I only have responsibilities to one of them and I'm making sure that she is safe and she's safe. I can't speak directly for Megan's other sisters. Can she? Maybe. But I can only push that conversation if I know that you can be trusted. And the only way I know that you can be trusted, Cal, is if you accept my offer. Because then you are bound by something greater than just a handshake or an agreement signed on paper. You will be responsible for a lot of people. I think there's a better way to describe it. You don't think it's responsibility? Oh, I do. I don't mean that. I think that I will be responsible for the continuation of Gerald Walker's vision. You mean James Walker, his father. And his, from what I know of Gerald, it was. Gerald continued the work of his father mm -hmm. after his father died. Gerald is the last, was the last of the siblings born from a greatest generation family as James served in World War II and came back after seeing the devastation to start the Walker Foundation. He wanted that type of evil never to affect the world again. I can appreciate that viewpoint. At that, Harold chuckles a little bit and just continues to drink. <clears throat> then I will say that I'm interested but 
require more data before I make a decision. Trisha looks at you, gauging you. I can give you 48 hours. Other than that, after that, I will have to make a different decision. And I fear my brother will not be able to hold his patience for very long. You've seen the type of tempers that he displays. That being said, I am at your disposal. You may ask me, I will make introductions at the foundation. They will open up for you today, tonight is Saturday. They will open up for you Sunday, but I will need an answer by Monday morning. So a little less than 48 hours, but we'd like to make an announcement Monday if we're going to do this. Then you'll have it. Well, brother, are you okay with this? Is this meet your standards? She says, and she kind of looks over and there's a devilish smile on her face. And he shakes his head, downs the last of his drinks, begins to stand, and he puts a hand on your shoulder and it's a nice, heavy, firm grip on your... I don't think you know what you've gotten yourself into there. She's a hell of a negotiator. He doesn't say anything, he just kind of... And so as Harold moves off for a second to go and get another set of drinks, Trisha looks over to you and says, what's interesting to me, given every part of this discussion so far, is that you haven't asked for compensation. What do you want, Cal? And don't say money. And don't say you want your business back. Don't. What do you really want? Because clearly you're serving an interest or a purpose here that is greater than personal gain. I was going to answer that very same question from him shortly before you stepped through that door. And I have thought about it for a very long time. Far longer than all of this. Um, and I thought at first it was my business, which was nice, it was fun, it was fulfilling for the most part, in part because of Choban. I mean, the, the magazine allowed me to teach, to show people revelries, delights, which they could never have found, well, maybe never have found on their own. And then, for my more carnal needs, there was Shoban. And uh, then that was all gone. And I had still a business of sorts. It was diminished, but it was still fun. But through it, I realized that there was something underlying all of that that even with the magazine, even with all of the various pleasures that my life has brought to me, there's always this undercurrent of longing. And I have spent many years trying to figure out how to most efficiently define and explain what it is. And right before you walked in that door, I was going to tell him a family. In some senses, being chairman of the Walker Foundation gives me a significant family to watch over and protect. But that's distant, disconnected sort of family. And not to be blunt, 
the whole of what I want. Now, don't don't take this the wrong way. Given that you were going to be here, I did a little bit of looking into you. And I would say a couple of things in response to your ultimate desire. First, you could have chosen better. Your playmate choices, especially Siobhan at the end, you could have chosen better. But I understand a man of your appetites. And the second thing I would say is that your, until today, your current choice of company that seems like good people that seems like a family family isn't coherent it isn't functional it isn't cohesive it's dirty it's raw it's like love only in this particular case It's completely out of control, but it's still people who care about you and who I suspect, even though it's a short time, you care about them. I'll be completely honest. I've got a couple of investigators looking at all of you and you all are sloppy in respect to you. managing your privacy you cal have wonderful delights and in another life i think you would be perfectly happy but in this life even if it doesn't last you have to hold on for family for as long as you can but I don't know how personally I can offer you that in a contract. I can give you my personal guarantee that I will help you find peace in whatever means necessary with that particular facet of life. I will, I will dedicate some time for you to make sure that you get exactly what you need. And I will say this before you you get started in your vetting process with this particular job. It's much more than you probably understand. And to ask as many questions as possible because once you make the decision, your hands will be tied in some ways in respect to what you can do next or what happens after. Refresh my brain. Which of the sisters is with her? Megan, the youngest. Thank you. When next you see her, I understand that I cannot demand an answer. I can hope for one. Can you find out if she knows if her, if her sisters are safe? She's looking up at Harold, who is starting to approach. I can do that. And Harold sits back down. So what striking conversation did my sister regale you with? Did she? Family. And when you say that, he just gets a little quiet for a second and just sits down. He places a drink in front of her, places another drink in front of you. I miss being a family. And he looks up at Trisha for just a second. 
raises his glass to her as she does to him and says and then he looks and he goes all right let's eat and they will cut to geo johnny and the incapacitated morian where are you guys going cal's abandoned office (laughs) (laughs) such a terrible idea because i'm pretty sure something went down there on um, other crew night. We literally do Saturday. not know this. So. No, I know. I'm, 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 I'm speaking out loud for... It's all for fucking me. plywood instead of glass in the front now, probably. So It looks like a crack house? Great. That would be perfect, though. It does look like a crack house, sort of, because there's police line tape like running, you know, wrapped around parts of the mm-hmm. building. There's a huge hole that has been covered with, like, plastic and plywood and, and poster board and all that kind of stuff. So as... As you, you know, kind of drive up, you see this, you're like. Okay, but are there police, like, around? No. Is there the kind of police tape that's, like, covering the door so they know if anyone goes in? Yes. Oh, we probably shouldn't go in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What the fuck happened here is what everybody else uh, is thinking. Cal's house? (laughs) Uh, um, Remember the last what? time that you did that? Oh, yeah. I still don't know the password. 69, 69? <laughs> yeah. Just a friend stopping by. What, what, what happened? You were you were there. It didn't end well. There was an alarm. We had to leave. No, the, the house. Oh, here? Yeah. I don't know. That's concerning, though. We should ask Cal. Text Cal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no I, response. Like, if, if Gia, like, we're, like, parked in front, we're, like, uh, I'd be texting Cal going, like, um, your <laughs> old office is destroyed. We don't know why. Did you take pictures and send it to him? <laughs> yeah, I would, I would send him a picture like, and be, <laughs> like, be, like, I'm sorry to give you bad news, but, um, yeah, uh, miss you. Bye. <laughs> no answer. All right. I also wonder if, just real quickly, I wonder if Cal's choice of phone at some point would be to list to stick with a flip phone for as long as possible before actually updating himself to a PDA, just because he's that kind of a kind of a technophobe. Yeah. I mean, he he does have a a a, a, a more more of a PDA. But uh, but he's got it in a, in a solid wood case, so he doesn't really need to touch it all that much. <laughs> um. Okay, so um, all right, I don't I don't like doing this, but I guess we can go to my apartment. Um, okay. Okay. You guys. Like, uh, for some odd reason, I, I have this nagging feeling that we all decided not to go to our personal places, but were we being followed? Didn't look. No, you don't. That's not obvious. No, no, no. Involved. Just in general, did we find out something where we're being followed or no? no. Okay. We were worried about uh, uh, Vidalis or whatever, but mm. yeah, that that hasn't played out yet. Nope. Let's just. We'll... I mean, the only other places nobody needs to worry about that. Yeah, there's Xanadu, but... Eh. No, I think we should... I, I don't think we should be letting Bjorn know anymore, or Gallows know any more than he Why? always does. I don't know. I, it's something about what's happening with Morrigan right now. I don't know why I don't trust him, but I feel like he'd exploit it. Why? He doesn't seem like he'd do that. Again, I couldn't tell you, but there's something about him. Okay. Um, well, I guess we can go to your place. Alright, so I drive through... Uh, there is there is a Malcolm's abandoned warehouse. Look on Johnny's face when you said that. <laughs> well, all I could all I could think is it's 15 minutes till Mike's stream probably ends, so he could totally join. 
<laughs> but no, that's um, he wouldn't be there because this is night four. And yes, he, I'm. And yes, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But still, it would be funny. Uh, what? It's if, your like, it's if Gephardt is there, not a good idea for whatever's going on with Morgan. I I really don't think so. No, because it's a bunch of kids. She likes kids, doesn't she? I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> she, I mean, she doesn't seem like she likes much. Hey, we can, I, you know, going back to your place is great, but you kind of don't even want to go back there. But if we go to this abandoned place, uh, I can get us in. I know how to get there. There's also a secret tunnel that connects my arcade to uh, that place, too. So I can Wait, get what? us some food and some drinks, at least. I mean, all right, if you think that's safe. I mean, yeah. Okay, give me directions. Those kids beat up Manny, so... It, if you say so, lead the way. All right, go... Uh, it's not actually too far from here, so we're still in the blue collar district. So uh, it's, it's about ten minutes this way, and I okay. give them their directions. Okay, and so when you arrive there, it looks like a pretty much an abandoned warehouse. Yep, okay. seen a lot of those lately. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I go to the the side entrance where uh, everything is, uh, carrying Morgan. Uh, or if a uh, Geo's like guiding Morgan or whatever, yeah, because uh, okay. she's canatonic, she's not like I'm lazy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I would like uh, knock on the door and kind of open it up, and I'm like, "Hey!" <laughs> I just imagined her like Nathan Nathan Lane in the birdcage, just <laughs> 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 over and over and over. Again. I love that movie so much. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh. Such a um, good so yeah, I would I would open the open the thing up and then be like, hey. No response, but it's clearly the same warehouse that you were taken to before, and inside it, it's clearly laid out in the same way. All right, I'm coming in. I, I brought some people. We need to hide. We're playing hide and go seek. Is there a loud noise when the door opens to this place? Mm-hmm. All right. Right about now is another flashback. Whenever you would ah! like. To <laughs> as the door time. slams behind okay yeah so as soon as this loud noise um uh both geo and and johnny can see like morgan like briefly snaps out of it like in reaction to the noise and then we're doing another flashback here um so uh this one is a kind of um, aerial view of a crime scene um, and there is a body that's been laid out in a similar fashion to what we previously described. Um, bits and pieces laid out in a kind of ritualistic fashion as Morgan is seen speaking with Derek, uh, Detective Derek Roth in the corner uh, and the rest of the area is very busy with investigators as the, the crime scene photographer is taking photos. Um, the mortician is there or the the, uh, the coroner is there and like going through information with one of the other investigators nearby. Uh, it's just very busy. It seems hectic, like people are scrambling um, and you know, we cut over to Morgan and um, Derek, who are discussing. Uh, and Derek says, "Yeah, this is confirmed. This is Jessica Cavallo." Uh, Morgan looks around the crime scene for a moment, and she she looks back at Derek and says, "I think I have enough to make a profile." And we cut over to Morgan in her office on the computer as the camera focuses on a blank screen with nothing but the top of the document saying, uh, the maiden butcher case file number 580651. And then she begins typing and it says victimology. Subject targets single women in their late twenties to early thirties. All women had striking similarities in physical appearance white, slim in their physique between 5'6 and 5'8, green or blue eyes, long brunette hair. All women worked in professions that had some position of authority or power. Subject chooses women who follow a routine which can easily be tracked or followed. And then the next note, 
medical examination. The primary areas noted from the autopsy analysis are as follows. Um, I just want to say trigger warning to anybody in chat. I'm going to substitute a word that's later on down the road, but I just wanted to put that out there. Back in see. I'm triggered. What, what did I miss? Trigger, what did Victims you suffered prolonged periods of physical torture, likely several weeks, if not months. Evidence of repeated manual strangulation followed by resuscitation. Subject was able to maintain control over victims with some fashion of bindings as evident by ligature marks observed on the body. Subject most likely used a ruse to isolate his targets, followed by a blitz attack to subdue them before arriving to the holding location. Post-mortem mutilation, body is always cut into multiple pieces at major joints, left at crime scenes and positioned in a ritual fashion. Evidence of assault on all victims. Times of death, likely in very early morning hours based on when the body was found. Cause of death is inconclusive, but most signs point to asphyxiation. And then uh, the camera goes back to black and we return to Morgan, who is now standing and she's shaking and tears are rolling down her eyes again. Hey, 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 you, you, you all right? We, we, we got somewhere safe, we're, we're out of there. Where are we? Uh, a, a warehouse, oh, somewhere what? safe. No, 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 we can't be here. It's not the same warehouse. What? No, 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 where is she? Is she here? No, she's not here. <sighs> oh God! Hey, hey, come on, come on, let's let's sit down. Uh, I'll get you something <sighs> to drink. Oh God! Did that really happen? Is it her? Was it who? It was Sydney. It was it was her. Was she there? We saw that. You saw that, right? Her head. Well, it wasn't Phoebe, but that shit's scary, man. Oh my god. I I didn't recognize the face. I, I don't know who Sydney is. It's my fault. Is it someone you know? Somebody that I used to know. Oh god. Does was the police there? Did they find her? Uh we don't know. We're, we're kinda left. Oh god. Uh, you know, because you went all, you know, zombie, and then we, how are we going to explain that to the police? We got the fuck out of there. We wiped everything down before we left. This is, this is so much worse than you can possibly imagine. Well, help us imagine. You guys should know the case. This the most prolific serial killer in all of the city. Years How long ago. ago was that? What, three years ago? Two years ago? Uh, I think we discussed three years ago, yeah. Yeah. Huh? <sighs> the maiden butcher. He killed 15 people. The 16th was a survivor. It was Sydney. Well, how come her dying is your fault? Because her testimony put him behind bars. But, but it, he, he escaped. So, How wait. Long ago? He escaped three months after they put him behind bars. What, did you like... For years. Did you force her to do testimony or something? Like, usually testimony is something you do on your own will. Not exactly. I need to find her daughter. She has a daughter. Oh my god. Oh god. What if he has her? Shit. I need to talk to Derek. I don't know what to who do. Who has her? The maiden Arthur butcher. Bishop. That's who? The, the psycho goddamn sadist. Oh shit. You don't understand. This is... <laughs> I was hoping that he, for whatever reason, died or something and... People like him don't stop killing. They don't just stop. It's been years since he's been out. And the something happened, and now back. how did he break out of jail? 
I don't know. Nobody knows. Wait, is he like us? What? I don't know. No. I, How do you not know that? I can't. It's not that easy to tell. I mean, <sighs> if he was able to break out of prison without a trace, maybe. This doesn't. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I should. I told Derek something didn't feel right when I saw it. But what does this mean about Phoebe? No, this. What? I'm like, you see me like turn around. I'm like yelling for like people. I say like a bunch of names. I cannot remember all the fucking names. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And I'm like, ah. The twins. Yeah. (sighs) Nobody responds. You don't actually see any of them. In fact, you don't hear anything in the actual warehouse. Uh, is is all the things set up like before though? Like their beds are there and. Oh yeah, the, all of the the things that Malcolm showed you about this place are there, but okay. nobody is there. You can like, still yeah. see the door though. Uh, this is Malcolm's place, but no one's here. They were here last time, but maybe they're out. You see all the beds and all that. Why did what? Why did we come here? Uh, because no one knows about this place. <sighs> okay. That was really fun of you, Johnny. Well, thank you, Morgan. Uh, sorry, I just... No, no, it's okay. Um, so... What does I, this mean? I need to... Uh, Derek needs to know about the head. Maybe they found it. I don't know. How long has it been since we were down there? Half uh, an hour? Oh, shit. Yeah. Also, Cal's old apartment's trashed. The office, not apartment. Oh, but. office, whatever. It, it it looked like a it looked like a, a house. But what, what what does that have to do with anything? Well, we went there first because we knew no one was going to be there. But then that it's not really it, important. Tapes all over the place, um, so something happened there. Okay, I this we have to do something. I don't. Why did they think it was? Why did she have Phoebe's clothes? That's, that's that's what it question. is. What, why? So wait, you know what Bishop looks like, right? Yeah, everybody knows what he looks like. Just do a search. I, I, I guess. But does he? Uh, and then uh, I kind of go through and like I sage what uh, Bishop, uh, Maiden Killer Bishop images. Uh, and does Maybe he? Butcher. <laughs> yeah. Does he? Does he look like the description the homeless man gave me? Uh, so, yes, but that's going to be, con- con- uh, that's actually something that we haven't talked about privately about what he actually looks like. So, yes, if the, if the, the, if the description changes based on a backstage conversation, then yes, that it will evolve. But yes, the description does sort of look like the description that. The yeah, individual- the, the, the key of it is that, um, and it's something that you guys will discover through f- future flashbacks, but his physical appearance assists him in targeting specific like women. So he's attractive um, and has a way with words kind of deal. So um, like the, the description was fine. There was no like indication oh, of, of- It's Cal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, uh, so he kind of fits the description the homeless guy gave me. As in, wait, somebody saw him. Well, do you I think mean, if we found that guy again? He could he could say if that's the same person. Uh, I I don't know. Oh God, we have to find him because uh, he he went into a box and disappeared. The the man that brought the body. Wait, what? No, the homeless man. The homeless man disappeared into a box. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I'm used to seeing weird shit nowadays, so I just kind of give it up. So, okay. Look, so he told me there was a man who came out in front of the uh, the. You see, Johnny put down his backpack and he starts pulling out stuff. Um, 
and he's like, a man was in front of the, uh, pulled up in a van, uh, windowless, white van, uh, and he was talking on the phone around 5 a.m. yesterday, uh, as I told you guys before, saying something about payments or all that kind of stuff. But when you were in your little catatonic state, uh, I found this down there, and it's a bunch of, like, vines in a bag. Uh, it was like, this was in the, uh, the processing area. And then, uh, then, uh, the Freon's been filled recently and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. I broke the valve off of it. Maybe there's a fingerprint on it. I don't know. Or like, it looks wiped down, but they might've missed something. Uh, so there's that. Um, as well as, uh, I chipped up some, uh, blood from, uh, the cement. Uh, there's still a lot of blood left down there, but we do have this blood. And then, um... I can't remember what the other thing I got was. I can't remember. Huh? You I got the plants. Yeah. Oh. I already said that one. The, the, uh, uh, the loading dock information. Oh, and I, yeah, and then I took this picture. So someone was there recently because you could see the handprint right there. Someone brought a commercial vehicle and loaded it up. The other thing is um, the company that usually fills the Freon for uh, the abandoned building, uh, they haven't done it in 10 years and no one signed off on anything. So. I mean, we can narrow down a search of uh, uh, people who bought a large amount of Freon That's because- It's work, Johnny. That's- we, Why? We, we accidentally caught him the first time. If he doesn't want to be found, there's no- <sighs> I should have just fucking killed him when I had the chance. What's that going to do? <sighs> he wouldn't have killed Sydney. I still don't understand why it's your fault. Because if she hadn't testified, then he wouldn't have maybe made her a target again. Well, uh, she, uh, she testified on her own accord. How is that your she fault? She didn't testify. It was me. What? What do you mean? I mean, she wouldn't go. And this was the only way to put him behind bars. I had to, and I talked to her about some general process behind it, and she agreed to the extent that she understood. And I walked into the police station and made a witness statement as Sydney. She told me everything that happened. I, I, I didn't tell a lie. It just, she wouldn't do it herself because of her daughter. Wait, you could transform into people? Yeah, pretty much anybody. Cool. Well, that's scary. Um, but yeah, you probably shouldn't have done that. Well, he had killed 16 people in less than a year. So I don't know. Also, you know, tortured them for several months at a time, mutilated their bodies, all sorts of other things that we don't need to get into. But, you I know, get it. he's a sicko and he deserves to be behind bars. The question is, how do we get him back scared. there? She, she what was... does this have to do with Phoebe? I don't know. I don't understand. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It has to be connected. Again, more, th more questions, less answers. You said he made a phone call. The question is, who is that phone call to, right? Well, I know what time it was made at. It was around 5 a.m., so if we ping the towers in that area... I don't know how to ping towers, though. Is that how that works, Morrigan? I don't know. I'm not a hacker. <laughs> I don't... You work with the I, cops, I, I figured... Yeah, but the, I don't... I mean, I tell the techs to, to do, you know, I help and make suggestions. I think we need to talk to Derek. I, I don't know. He needs to know that it's him. What, what's that going to help? That's going to put everyone in a panic. There is a serial killer in this city. Yes, they should be in a panic. This isn't how just some random been, guy choosing. How, how long has he been since he's broken out of jail? Two and change years. He's probably been here the whole time. And that's impossible. He must have been incapacitated because when somebody like him is killing, he can't stop himself. It's an impulse that is uncontrollable. As somebody who has to deal with, you know, impulses similarly, I have control over mine. He's a serial killer. Like, I don't think you have control over yours, but... Um, 
Maybe Grant's it just took him this long to find Sydney. He had to finish his work before he could make another. It doesn't make sense. It's not consistent. He he has to fulfill his urge. I, I just... <sighs> could it be possible that we just didn't find the bodies for two fucking years? No, that's... <sighs> Maybe Sydney... Oh. I hate to say it. Maybe she was just more resilient than some others. For two years? I can't even think about that. And then we have to find out what happened to our daughter. Why is Phoebe involved in this? Maybe it's just the only way he was able to get me in the case. If it's a message to me. Maybe. Um, you would have gotten in the case if it weren't her, too. No doubt. Well, he didn't use his standard signature, so I don't know. Maybe. No, there must be someone else. Someone's using him. Someone... Someone wanted that Phoebe prop there. I don't know. All right. I got some contact info of someone from the gangs by the docks. They didn't seem to know it. They weren't involved in anything that went on here tonight, but they might, they might know something and they might have some interest in what's happening on their turf. Then yes, let's go talk to them like right now. <laughs> What? What? Why are we still standing here? What? It's our only lead. There's... The longer we wait, the farther he gets. The more likely he's going to kill somebody. You get a text from Derek. Oh, shit. And what does this to say? Hey, where did you go? We're looking to kind of uh, circle the, the wagons and have a, a powwow about what we know so far. Shit, shit. Derek's texting me. Um, tell him tell. you had to wash your hair. What? What? I don't know. Tell him the truth. We <sighs> found the head of Sydney in a freezer and got too scared. That's not the truth, is it? And you guys were down there with me. They're going to find evidence of you guys down there. We, we covered our tracks. <sighs> okay. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like the way she, that Johnny's laughing at that. <laughs> did you change the game? You did not change the game, did you? No. I no, mean, it was preface that we were trying to do that first. Um, she she texts Derek and and she she writes um. Check uh check the freezers in in the the bottom level. I couldn't stay. It's okay. as close to the truth as she can, she can go there on that one hmm. without getting into it. Um, at this point, I'll, uh, I'll pull out my phone and look at the pictures that we had taken of, or that I had taken of the head. <sighs> so are you investigating? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So since this is kind of a limited... I mean, you're going to be limited to the the pictures. Instead of it getting, instead of you rolling and investigate, I think we should just give you. You can either have two vague clues, or you can have one detailed clue about what you can see in those pictures. I think that that makes a lot more sense than you trying to roll because you're going to have the opportunity to kind of just stand, look at that, and kind of stare, right? Yeah. Be able to to, to kind of you know um, assess what the what's in the pictures. So. Um, do you want two vague clues or do you want one detailed clue? Uh, I'll take a detailed clue. Um, a detailed clue. Uh, I 
there's no frost damage on the hair and the uh, eyelashes. They're not brittle. Like you can see that they, it almost looked like the head was placed there very recently before you took the picture. Okay. So maybe that body was still Phoebe's. That's true. We don't know. We we don't know if it was Phoebe or not. Shit. <sighs> okay. I feel like I need to go to the police station. <clears throat> or we need to follow up and see. I need to do something. I can't just stand here to you. Text response from Derek. What what do you mean that the, the freezers? The freezers in the basement. We were just can we're still working the, the scene up here. Is there something else you know? Text him back. I was just kind of wandering around trying to get a feel for the area and she like sends like a partial text and then like about a minute later she's like there's a fucking head in the freezer as you were as you were starting to type that you, you get a response from him god damn it morgan what the hell's going on and then i sent the, there's a fucking head in the freezer and the, the, I, you you finish that as, he, as yeah. he's kind of and, and you can, and it's it's basically one of those situations like on an iPhone where you're using iMessage and you can oh, see, oh yeah, them <laughs> type, right? And yeah. you can you can see them typing and pause, and yeah. pause for like thirty seconds, and then they're typing again and then pause, <laughs> and they're typing again. Jesus Christ, you need to get back here right away. I need to know what the hell's going on. She just writes, "Fine, I'm on my way." O M W. She abbreviates, <laughs> abbreviates. <laughs> I gotta go back to the crime scene. All right. Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to help you much anymore there. You want me to go talk to the gangs? Uh, yeah, I guess. Oh wait, actually, I gotta. I gave them my card. I didn't get their number. They. I gotta wait for them to reach out to me. That's yep. right. Um. Well, the maybe other thing you can... we can do is go talk to Morty from way long ago. Yeah, that's true. Ah, uh, maybe. Uh... What gangs do I remember from my nightly excursion? Skulls, uh, Alley Cats, The Beasts. Uh, those are the three that stand out to you. Uh, we're closest to the Skulls. And I was like, let's go see the Skulls. Let's go talk to Simon, or Solomon, or whatever. Samuel. Samuel. Sam Solomon, <laughs> yeah. You got there. All right, so let me, let, me see, let me see if I understand what's going on here. Gio and uh, Johnny are going to go talk to Skulls, and Morgan is going to go back to the case. Well, did I get any text messages back? You have not yet. Okay. So, uh, yeah. That's what we're doing. Sorry, I was just responding to Johnny since he was prompting for a text message from Flickr of all people. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we're going to cut back to we're going to cut back to Cal, who is just finishing. What would Cal order at uh, Santino's? What would good for Cal at Santino's? To to eat. Yeah. What would what would Cal, what entree would Cal be enjoying this evening? Chicken parmesan and fettuccine. That's open for a nice gnocchi, but it's good. <laughs> okay. So you're you're finishing that you're finishing that as what's in front of Trisha of all things is just a bowl or a plate of spaghetti with some marinara sauce and that's it. And in front of in front of Harold is quite a meal of a variety of things lasagna, you know, uh, just uh, just all kinds of things, right? And so as the the the, the meal is beginning to wind down, uh, the polite conversation has. You know, kind of subsided again. Trisha kind of looks over to you and says, "Well, Cal, I think the evening is starting to wind down, and I actually have another appointment. Is there any questions I can answer you before you begin your vetting process tomorrow?" <clears throat> Nothing immediately pressing, but there will be. And he looks between the two of them, something, as we move forward. Again, Cal, 
we want to announce Monday morning if you're going to join us. We need to announce. I I understand that it doesn't. The really process ha the process has to begin quickly, and that's why I'm asking you to take the opportunity now while you have me in front of you. I won't be joining you at the foundation tomorrow. I'm not being seen publicly right now. There are my reasons. This has nothing to do with that. It's simply that if I choose to accept, or even if I don't, in either case, since there have been some, at least partially, fences mended here, I would hope, I would very much like to have dinner once more with the two of you and your father. This is a business arrangement that has nothing to do with my father. <laughs> Harold chuckles. He left the business years ago. He has no interest in, in such affairs. This wasn't about the business. <laughs> You're but talking never mind. about... But never mind, fine. Okay, Cal. Here is the number, and she passes the number over to you of my contact at the Walker Foundation, who serves the chair, the, the board, who will make be available for you starting at eight a.m. tomorrow until you deem you're done with your research. Here is my personal number. She slides over a separate thing, a separate card. You can reach me after five p.m. at that tomorrow. And we can discuss any other aspects of this arrangement or any questions that you have. I'm sure Harold will provide uh, himself to have a conversation as well. If you need to speak to any of the other board members, barring the Dairy sisters, I will be more than happy to make those introductions. And... I think it's safe to presume that you have my contact information as well. Close optional, Cal. Close optional. Hmm. So noted. Carol looks at that at that last little line from Trish. She's like looking at Cal and then looking over to Trisha. You just Yes, that includes you. Don't believe me, that includes you. <clears throat> Very well. <laughs> yes, I'm hungry too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we're talking about food and chat. Um, Trisha looks at you and says, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I have a previous engagement that are another engagement that I need to get to. I'm sure my brother will have things that he wants to convince you of at the end of this. I forgo dessert because I have that other appointment. So again, Cal, anything you need, but we need your decision by Monday morning. You'll have it. And she stands up, takes his hand and shakes it in business fashion, but a little bit of courtesy and nods to her brother and steps out. <laughs> and Harold looks relieved. Well, now that that's over, what do you really want to know? Are your interests in the resources of the Walker Foundation and hers so very different? Absolutely. You didn't ask her really what she wanted. No, I didn't. You should have. Probably. Don't let her convince you to do something that is a manipulation. I genuinely want my people to be taken care of. I genuinely want a better life. 
those that matter. People fall to the wayside. Cal's eyes kind of narrow at that for a moment. Which not everybody is deserving. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I said, which implies that there are those that don't. Absolutely. Not everyone has earned the right to be taken care of. I can see logic in that. So the two of you being so intransigent when dealing with one another, that implies to me that you do know what she wants. I do. No, no, no. The way this game is played, if I'm being truly sincere to my sister's wishes, you should ask her and we'll hear her answer. I couldn't do it justice. She's quite the orator. All right. Then that may well be the linchpin in my decision. Don't lie. Don't diffuse. You know you're going to answer yes. This has been the best offer you've ever had in your life, Cal. On the surface, yes. But as you said, you want a family, Cal. I heard your sister, or my sister, and you have a little conversation. Just because I'm at the bar doesn't mean I can't hear. I didn't think you could. <laughs> didn't think you couldn't. There. That's not what I mean. It's very well chosen words to say that that is how the game is played. And between the two of you, I get the distinct feeling that that is largely what it is. A game that you're playing with each other. And while I can see that happening between siblings, ultimately, it is the Walker Foundation which is caught in this tug of war between the two of you. And during my vetting process tomorrow, I will speak with the board and its various representatives. I will get all of the answers about the foundation that I need. However, it will be her answer because I have yours as to what you want but it will be that last piece of information that is the linchpin that makes me sure as I can be that I can make an informed decision. Don't delude yourself, Cal. As you said to me before, this isn't just about you. This is about your young friend, Johnny, as well. So don't take this decision lightly. Otherwise, I might have to make other arrangements for him. Oh, I see. Hmm. You're going to eat your cheesecake. More of a tiramisu kind of man myself, but sure. 
And he slides over the cheesecake. And Cal takes a just a small bit off the tip. <laughs> and spends an inordinate amount of time licking it off the spoon with a tongue that could easily wrap all the way around the spoon and down down the, the handle of it and then just pulls it back. It's being unnecessarily erotic in, in the way that he is, you know, tasting it. <clears throat> hmm. I don't remember. Where is the Walker Foundation based? What part of town? The headquarters is here in downtown. I'm sure that you would have known that. They have outreach offices in every district where they serve the needs of those who they deem worth their time. Doesn't necessarily serve everybody that deserves it. But... Well, I can, I can appreciate that. Those who are in dire straits because they have no choice. Much more deserving than those who are looking for a hand up because they don't want to bother striving for something better. I agree with that. <clears throat> so, you laugh and you say that this is the best offer that I've had laid before me in a while. Honest opinion. Do you think I should take it? It's a bold move by my sister. Clearly, I was outwitted because she, of course, is the choice that I would have. Fair bit of control in that situation. It would definitely serve my interests to get her more directly involved. Might even get my father back into the fold. But it was a brilliant move. My father would sometimes say that maybe she was the one who should have taken over as CEO. But I was the one who made the bold strokes, who stepped forward and took it. You didn't answer my question. I know. But I wanted you to understand the circumstances with which you are walking into in this family discussion. She is probably right. You would make an excellent chairman. Especially since you are so easy to work with. And the, just the corners just drift up into a smile of, of just wanting so badly to say something coy and just, mm, just not. <laughs> so he just purses his lips and nods a little bit. Just, What time is it at this point? Probably closer to nine at this point. Tomorrow's a big day. That it is. 
Now, if you don't have anything else, Cal, I actually do have one other arrangement myself tonight. And she won't be left waiting for too terribly long. I should hope not. Enjoy whatever else. The restaurant is ours for the rest of the night. If you'd like to invite anybody to join you for a nightcap, please take advantage of Santino's hospitality. All right. And he steps up and offers you a bold shake to hand, your hand to shake, shakes it and says, You have my contact information. Unlike my sister, I do not put limits on my time. If you have any questions, call me anytime. But she is right. We need a bold answer by Monday morning. Make the right one, Cal. And he steps away. And as soon as he's out of the room and, and Cal's in there pretty much by himself, Cal just sort of leans back and picks up his wine glass. Oh my God. <clears throat> Shit. By the way, if you you now come, you're coming out of the, the seriousness of the scene. You feel your phone blowing up with text messages. Yeah. Oh, I knew they were all coming. I felt every one of them, and I was like, "I am busy. I am not answering these things." So finally, pulls them out. He doesn't even read what they are. He just immediately texts Geo, "Where are you?" Uh, warehouse. This address. Uh, docks. Mal's place. He's not here. <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't text Johnny because the next question would be when just, Cal just sends back, hungry? <laughs> and I know what Johnny would say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I could eat. <laughs> and the next response is, are they with you? Uh, I'm going to assume that this is happening. This, this text messages are coming in just as the three of you are about to split. So. Yeah. Yes, Morgan has to return to crime scene, though. Does he actually know that there was a crime scene to begin with? Nope. <laughs> That's why I'm like, oh. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, like, oh, is no. it more yeah. against the crime no. scene? I think, yeah, that was, <laughs> like the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. <laughs> just, like you were, just like you were talking about before. We Not her crime scene. Quick just, follow. Yeah. You get the little triple dots. And then, and then, it, and then it triple dots. And then there's nothing in the triple dots. <laughs> As Cal types in hers and doesn't send, and it erases it, and then starts to type hers, and then no. Joe <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> understands what he's thinking and just says, not hers. <laughs> and he Gio <laughs> just sends a stupid little emoji of, you know. <laughs> and he's like, you know, uh, okay, and he just types in, you know, come to San Gino's. Okay. Johnny, uh, we're going to go get dinner with Cal. We can maybe meet up with the gang, gang members after. You're muted. Johnny is muted. Yes, Johnny's muted. Character Johnny. Yeah. Johnny. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait. <laughs> I have to talk to Cal. Well, this is a good chance. Well, let's go. Okay. I need to also, go to the crime scene. Someone yeah. might text us with the location that we have to meet him at. Um, what? 
Santinos. Like you would know where Santinos. You've all been there. Have it's been the place there? we broke it. It's the crow place. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say you've been with a broom there. You know where. It is. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would go that way. But, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, we'll uh, keep. We'll tell him what happened. I guess. Well, we'll see what he wants first. Sure. Just have fun uh, with that, and um, yep. I don't even know what to say at this point, so I'm just gonna go and deal with, you know. Yeah. Um. That. The wrath of God. Ha ha. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> and Cal tells the uh, the kitchen that they had better. Get the never-ending pasta bowls ready because <laughs> somebody's got free breadsticks and oh yeah. <laughs> God damn it, guys! I'm so hungry. What's wrong? With you? <laughs> <laughs> bitches. There's chicken in the fridge. Go get some. No, I can't eat the chicken. On I, I'm about to go to a crime scene. There's about to be some crazy shit. Like I can't put a chicken. Showing up with chicken on leg in my mouth. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's, say, that's why you're not a coroner. You don't know, just sit there with. Like, KFC while you're cutting into somebody. You know. Yeah. Oops, left that in there. Oh, eh, no, they're awesome. dead. They don't mind. He's <laughs> dead. Okay. Uh, is that them or is that chicken? Um. <laughs> so it seems like the docks are probably a little bit close, or sort of the, the warehouse and where the crime scene is is a little bit closer than um, where Gio and Johnny have to go uh, in downtown. So uh, the three of you split, and we're gonna we're gonna follow Morgan along as she arrives back at the crime scene. Yep. And as you do, you can see that it's gotten even made more chaotic. Like there's more yeah. vehicles and there's more officers as the, as the investigation appears to be spreading out. Yeah. And as you kind of step inside, they are downstairs now and the staging area has now taken on more, or they, they, it's taken on more than just, okay, this is like a staging area for, for, you know, for, for stuff carrying up to the second level. It's now a full on crime scene investigation taking over the entire warehouse. Yeah. And you see Derek sort of like, you know, communicating with a couple of other, uh, you know, CSI investigators and, you know, a photographer and they've got some things, you know, kind of laid out. And as you walk up to the table, it's essentially a series of images that are the crime scene itself, you know, the, in pictures and then what was taken downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, I woke up. Um, Derek will notice that Morgan is quite disheveled at this point. She had been crying and doesn't remember really, so her makeup's all fucked up. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yep. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Why you God gotta do that stuff in Zoom chat, man? Looks, don't be a Greg. Don't be a Greg. Don't derail the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is, you know, what you guys don't have to react to it. It's just <laughs> people who are out of the scene. We're all having a conversation. Right, he, right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to react to it, even though that that's where we communicate for like back to channels. But okay, fine, whatever. Okay. Anyway, this. Yep. So Derek, uh, Derek, kind of, you know, looks up at you, and he kind of looks around, and he immediately comes around, wraps his arm around you, and leads you off to the side. Uh, and he, you know, kind of he takes you enough out of earshot of everybody else. Mm -hmm. and he, he, you know, pulls his arm back around, and it kind of just puts his hands gently on your shoulders, and kind of turns you away from everyone, and kind of looks down at you. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? No, <laughs> I am so far from okay. I, you know, it's him. I know the evidence and everything else, but you know it's him. He's been, he's been gone for a couple of years. I know. I mean, they've been talking about it like it's a cold case for the last year because no new evidence has come up. Why would he surface now? And why would we, why would we find evidence that it's BB Derek? He's not a copycat. He's a copycat wouldn't go after Sydney. He wouldn't. The amount of effort that he would have had to have gone through to find her is uh, only he would do this. I don't have all the details yet, but I will tell you this. 
That body up there? That's not Phoebe. We just found evidence. It's not Sydney. Preliminary, is it? Preliminary reports seem to indicate that this particular body has been dead for a couple of years. Fingerprints, DNA hasn't come back yet. We're running it right now, but the one other thing I know is you're right. It's not her. It's not her body. We took a picture of the cauterized neck, compared it against Sydney's head. The neck doesn't match. The sizing is slightly off. So, two more dead people. Because he's out there. Or, or, or it's another person and they magically happen to leave the bodies in the same place, even though it's two different killers, because that makes perfect sense. Oh, this city sucks. Is this a message? Sydney and if this is. is a message, well, obviously, he's paying her back for that testimony. He's, yep. finally, he's finally. But if I don't have any details on on the age of or the time of death on her her head yet, but I mean, that's clearly a message to 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 us, right? So yeah, he's pissed. What is his body then? What is why is this attached to the Dere sisters? What is he taking advantage of the, the 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 current news of the day? And but then how did he get her her clothes? It's a great question. I don't under it doesn't make sense. See, he's, he's so far off for so many different things. Is he changing the way that he does things? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's normal. It was in my it was in my profile that he would if he was forced to. But two years I, later, why didn't he just start killing again or go somewhere else? Why now? Why with all this? Why Phoebe's clothing? OK, so Sydney's head, Sydney's body has to be somewhere. And if he sticks to his signature, then he's going to leave it out for us somewhere in the next day. I don't know why the head was in the freezer. I don't, it doesn't make sense. He's changing everything, but he has to keep something the same. The only like his, his ritual has to still stay the same. Everything else can change, but the ritual is still there. We need to find her body. The ritual is the impulse, the thing that he cannot change. Where do you suggest we begin? <sighs> Find out how Sydney's connected to Phoebe. I know Sydney was being protected after everything by a wealthy family. So. Maybe we start there. You think it was the Dare sisters? Who else has that much money and access on Olympus? I can think of a fair list. I mean, we were at a party for one when we when Phoebe went missing, right? Yeah, but I mean, what other ties do we have? Well, I know the Bjorns live up there. <laughs> yeah, them again. All right. Well, I mean, we need to question. You need to question everybody. We can't. We can't overlook anybody anymore. It can be anybody at this point that's helping with this. I just. I don't understand what he's been doing for two years. Maybe he was planning his revenge. 
something else would have had to have been able to satisfy his needs in the meantime. He couldn't just not kill people. Maybe. Unless we just didn't find the bodies for two freaking years. You said it yourself. Torture would go on for months. The evidence supported that. It was a part of his MO. I know. Maybe that's... What if that's the body for two years? Two years with... Oh, God. If that body is two years old, we have to find out. All right. They're... Given the, the evidence with the head, they, they're, they're still questioning. But a couple of people already know that it is actually Sydney. There's some back channel conversations going among among City Hall that uh, we, we need to keep this quiet. But they're also talking about for, forming a task force. They don't want they don't want him public this publicized as more than it already is. We have to warn. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The, the most prolific serial killer from our city. And we're just going to try to keep this quiet. Oh, come on, Morgan. You know that they live off of the, the, the limelight. They love seeing their name in the papers. I know that they do. But when we kept it hushed last time, what happened? 16 women? Really, Derek? 16. It could have been worse. Sure. And now it is. I won't say anything, but I, I can't just sit on my hands and wait for another just body to come up. 24 hours. Give me 24 hours to figure out what the plan is with this. I'll make sure that you're in the conversations. All right. There's a task force forming. You were our, you were our go-to person for the psychological profile. You were the person that helped us catch this person. You, you put it all together. All right. So you're going to be in the room, but I need you to be patient. I know that's hard. Believe me. I know that's hard. We need to put out an alert for her daughter. I've already got people looking, but if you, if your theory is correct, that she was being hidden by the Dere sisters or by somebody else on Alinus, one of those families, I can only go so far. I'm going to have to pull some favors and maybe I can get somebody to, 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 to some, you know, give some information, but they've got some nice lawyers and they've got some nice, you know, high security fences and we can't just go busting in with a warrant. I go downtown and get a, try to get a judge to give me a warrant. They're going to ask me proper procedure, you know, and give me a hard time, especially if, you know, the, the, the lawyers of these individuals kind of figure this out. They protect their own. Then let me go. I'll, I'll just go as a concerned citizen. As a friend, concerned friend. Sydney was my friend. After all was said and done. Your name was high profile in that case, especially after she testified and you gave your excerpt testimony to. You know your name is associated with hers. If it ever comes out that it's her. Meanwhile, we don't know if her daughter is safe or being, you know, tortured and killed by. I'm doing the best that I can, Morgan. Work yeah. with me. Don't get frustrated. Be patient. You can, if you can make some calls, if you can, if you've got, you I mean, you've got some well-known clients that frequent your office. Why don't you start asking them? I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do here, Morgan. I've got, I've got two dead bodies here. I've got three women missing that I'm supposed to be collaborating with, with Devro, and she's not even fucking here yet. I don't know what her problem is. What do you expect me to do? I, I can only do so much. Look, I'm sorry. I know this is hard for you. I'm having... <sighs> brings up a lot of the past for me too. Yeah. I know. I promise you we will get through this and we will find this guy and we will finally find a way to make him pay. But the only way that that can happen is if we do it right. We did it right last time. Clearly we didn't. 
something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't have him executed on sight is what. <sighs> All right, listen, I'm going to go back to that table. Yep, I know. There's going to be a debriefing in a half hour. Do you have anything that you want to add or do you want to be there for the debriefing? <sighs> I don't know. I, I can be there to... I know we have new new guys on the force that can give a general profile again, but other than that, I don't know what other help I'll be. Okay, well then, if you want to take the investigation off site, I'll keep it going here, and I'll talk to you shortly. Okay. I'll know more about this task force tonight. I expect that right and early tomorrow morning we'll be putting it together. Yeah. Yeah. And he takes her gently again by the shoulders and he kind of looks her in the eyes and he says, it's going to be okay. I really hope so. All right. And he lets her go and immediately goes back to the table and begins to engage with them. Hmm. Okay. And we'll cut to Gio and Johnny arriving at Santino's. Oh, it has been too long since I have been here. Yes! I have never been to this establishment before. It looks like a fine place to dine for the evening, friend. The smell of various Italian spicy sort of red sauce smells with pasta and breads all are just kind of wafing from the kitchen and you hear Johnny's stomach. <laughs> oh, I, I remember those smells and I'm like, mm. oh, I have to go inside now. <laughs> And so how do they find Cal when they step inside? Uh, he's standing just outside of the the, the, the separate room, um, watching for them as soon as they show up. He kind of summons them. Uh, I would We're run up to them. Cal and be like, Cal, 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 I need to mend our group for our tournament. And he just points into the room. Oh, okay. Steps in, and there's... You know, a, a a a serving of of like some kind of pasta at one end of the table. There's what's left of a cheesecake in front of his spot, and there is an entire sheet of lasagna and a uh, and an entire bowl of like like a one gallon bowl of spaghetti with a, a marinara with with delicious sausage in it and mushrooms and and. Lots of fresh ground Parmesan cheese next to it. Johnny already has a full. He plate. just he just taps the spot right there, and it's like, sick. Seriously, you keep describing food. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Go to the local Italian restaurant. Get my order. And come back. Uh, <laughs> Joe's just gonna grab a slice of bread and, and spread some butter on it. Uh, essentially. That doesn't mean you have to start describing food now. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say uh, essentially or centrally? Essentially. <laughs> Just smooth butter on warm bread. So uh, I, I start like eating the new noodles and like, uh, like I have like lasagna and uh, all the food on my plate. Uh, and I'm eating and I'm like, so our homework ground is what happened. And I have to make atonement. And, um, and I have to bring our group How's it going, together. Jim? Why is he ignoring me? I'm not ignoring you. Finish eating. Okay. If possible. Um, and Don't he just like your mouthful. Okay. Uh, it's been a night. Uh, but it's been a lot of nights. So, about the same. <clears throat> Phoebe might be dead. Still not clear on that. I guess that's not news. Um... Uh, mm. If she's not dead, then someone tried to tried really hard to make it look like she was dead. Body emphasis on body, no head. 
found in the docks wearing her clothes, and a head that wasn't hers elsewhere. Alright. Also, there's a serial killer on the loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, it's the it's the work of the Maiden Butcher. Remember that story? Yeah. Morgan had a fit. Also, her fingerprints prints changed. Don't know what that's about. Oh, she could transform into people. Also, yeah, that's probably what that's about. It's not really all that shocking. She can turn into a bird. Yeah. I thought that's all she could do. Um... How have you Boy, been? Uh, we're not done yet. How is she doing? Uh, she's shaken. Uh, she apparently was pretty heavily involved in this case, so... Um, seeing this guy pop back up was emotional for her. She seems to blame herself for it. Apparently she can't feel guilt, so... She went canatonic for like 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was real weird. Hmm. Um, but she's back with the police now. Talking with Derek, I guess. And you, Johnny? Well, I, I told Mr. Gallows what I did, and so I have to make atonement, and I have to heal the group. So I've been looking for you for, oh, I don't know how long, like a day and a half, I think. Well, you found me. You were right and I was wrong. I shouldn't have broken into the place. Oh, also sorry for breaking into your house. Yeah, nice choice on the code, by the way. It seemed like a good guess at the time. It was. Okay. <clears throat> Some point also in the future? I'll tell you what it is, but... Fair enough. What are you saying, Johnny? No, Tamante is a very scary person when you tell him something he doesn't like. Yes. Yes, he is. But a lot of people can be like that. Yeah, but he has rainbow eyes. Yeah. You should see when he really relaxes. Okay. Love the implication there, Cal. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's all that's really happened. Um, apparently, Harold's up to something. We don't know what yet. Um, he's uh, Mr. Gallows, because I talked to him about the business proposition he brought up to me. And um, Tamante kind of said the same thing, that he's lost his way. But I don't really know what he's really doing. But I don't know if that has tied into everything with the sisters. Also with the serial killer, there just seems to be a lot and it's... I don't know. There's, I don't know where to begin. It is a many-faceted jewel made of shit. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Gio, what do I need to drink? Whew. I mean, I've seen, wait, no, I haven't seen you drink the cheap shit. Um, <laughs> oh, I, no. it's got to be a really special occasion for me to do that to myself. Eh. Go with a Negroni. 
They got a good one here. Hmm. Uh -huh. So Cal goes and orders a carafe. Uh, all right, so could be Phoebe's body, isn't Phoebe's body, maybe not Phoebe's body, definitely not Phoebe's head. Yes, that's the gist of it. Uh, Morrigan is on her way also. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. If there's anything you wanted to say without it, now's the time. No, actually, I think everything I have to say should wait until she gets here. She's five minutes out, so if you want yeah. to... So, so how have you been? <laughs> to arrival. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait for my gnocchi to arrive. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just go ahead and assume that I'm arriving now. Uh, so yeah, Morgan walks in through the door, looks around. Oh, your old office was destroyed. Mine? Yeah, we, we went there first uh, to find a place to hide because you said you weren't there anymore and it was abandoned. And it was there's police tape all over it. I sent you pictures. Oh, goody. Well, it's just it's the, the, the murder board. Kind of walks walks into the room. Uh, Cal will also notice her disheveled state, uh, and she kind of just sits down. I was gonna say he just motions to the other side of the table and stands as she sits. And he sits back down. Good evening, or evening. I don't think I'll use that word "good" for a while. Well, if something has happened in my old office. Oh uh, boy, depending on what Shoban does over that, they may be coming. I may look forward to hearing from the police again. So, at one point my house gets broken into, and then apparently the day before my former business is broken into and obliterated. That's just awesome. Okay. I did say I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um,. Oh, have we all caught up on the latest? No. Well, we've caught up I on your. Stuff. Told them what I know mostly. Yep, way worse than, way way worse than that. Oh. How much worse could it be? Ah, uh, well, the body that we thought was Phoebe, who was wearing Phoebe's clothing originally, is probably not Phoebe. In fact, has probably been dead for quite some time, as in, like, probably two years. Who knows? Maybe she's probably been tortured for about that amount of time. Sounds about right. And the Sydney's body is nowhere to be found, so... I'm not hungry anymore. Yep. Give it a few minutes. So, I'm sorry, Sydney? Sydney White. The soul used to be survivor. The survivor, the witness, yes, the testified. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, except for she didn't testify. I did as her. That's what you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, now her daughter's missing. So that's great. Um, yeah. And I can't do anything about it because. The mayor doesn't want a widespread panic about a serial killer who's, you know, been on the loose for two and a half years. No big deal. It's going to be great. Well, that sort of makes sense and sort of doesn't. I mean, it makes sense that they wouldn't want a widespread panic, but if... They need to be aware. I mean, I can't imagine unless he's had some kind of extensive facial reconstruction or some other kind of guys that women wouldn't recognize him as, you know, who he is. So his normal attempt at 
getting victims wouldn't work, but that doesn't mean, I mean, I theorize that he could technically have a partner. You know, if he was gone for two years, he can't be out there getting people. Maybe somebody else is, okay, sorry. He's, <clears throat> we know he's been in contact with someone. He made a phone call right after dropping off the, the body yeah, but at the warehouse. It doesn't make sense. I don't know how Phoebe's tied into this. I don't know, I don't understand why Trisha called me moments before I get this other phone call from Derek about the crime scene in the first place. And I I don't understand what the fuck is going on anymore. More so than I didn't before. Tr Trisha Bjorn? Yeah. She called you to say what? She told me that something about Megan was okay and to <laughs> stop looking for them. I was kind of drunk at the time, so. Yeah. It's been a long night. Yes. You threw up in an alley. Yep, that too. <clears throat> Not my proudest moment. But I have a lot of those very bad moments lately, so uh, just move on from that. Right, so uh, how have you been, Cal? Um, well, I just finished a meeting with Harold and Patricia Bjorn here at this table. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, wait, uh, could we get some napkins over here? So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, that makes total sense, because Cal's about to explain that. Um, Johnny, you had explained that uh, he had offered you, that Harold had offered you a position to help him keep people like us safe. Well, so, keep him safe, like a security job. Right, but ultimately, for the purposes of keeping people like us, to make, make a better world for people like us. Yeah, some World War II stuff. Right. And, um... So I went to talk to him about that. Initially, to try to get a better idea of what he was... What his plans for you were, specifically, given your talents. And somehow managed to get myself conscripted as an arbiter between him and his sister to discuss their intentions for the Walker Foundation. But that they don't have ownership in the Walker but, Foundation. But both of them, or at least Harold, is one of the people who seemed up for the position of chairman. Right, that I recall. And uh, he wanted me to talk his sister into taking over uh, the, the position of chairman, taking it on so that he could have some measure of influence without having to take on the responsibilities of chairman himself. So... Oh, without was... having to leave his at Asia. So we were here, attempting to uh, parlay some sort of an agreement. Uh, maybe not necessarily everything he wants, maybe not necessarily everything she wants. <clears throat> and... Uh... It seems to have been settled that they want me to be the chairman. Oh, okay. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. Congratulations. That's not a, yeah. Well, I, I haven't I haven't made a decision yet. I'm supposed to go and meet with the board tomorrow and talk to all of them about everything, and then. Uh, in just under probably 45 hours get an answer to that 
I, one or the other. Um. No offense, Cal, but uh, why you? I mean, you're 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 a member of high society, I guess, but but you're a you're a food and wine critic. You're not exactly a chairman of anything. I, what made them make that decision? It's entirely possible that that is what made that decision. Well, if they're yeah, trying to get more people people. with abilities into, you know, oh. critical roles, then perhaps that was not intended as a pun. <laughs> uh, it's however, not like they're streaming right now. <laughs> hey, don't tell people that. I don't actually know what their schedule is, but uh, yeah. Well, they're streaming uh, right. Fantastic. Great. Sorry. I suck. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, if uh, then, I mean, it makes sense that Harold wants people that he can, that he thinks he can control. Which I think the discourse over the period of dinner, if there's one thing that I fairly can well communicated to them is that I will listen to both of their opinions, but that controlling me is not something that they're going to be able to do. Hmm. Something and else. he still seemed interested despite that? Yeah. Almost amusedly so. Maybe he's just fucking with you. If only. Mm. He's you not that I mean, type. No. He's pretty I mean, straightforward and blunt. I, I don't know. Blunt. I can I be know. very convincing when I need to be. So how does this all tie together? I don't know, but I... So, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Did Trisha say anything about the sisters? That's exactly what I was just about to say. Oh, okay, sorry. It's okay. One of the things which I said was one of my contingencies was that uh, I asked her, because she, she mentioned that Megan is safe. Okay, it's consistent at least. And I asked her to ask Megan if her sisters were safe and to, if possible, get word back to me because I'm very concerned, as we all are. <clears throat> she seemed to indicate that that may not be possible, but there was never really any definitive answer from Patricia, at any point during the <laughs> thing, there were many implications and inferences, and, but it's always a dance, apparently, with her trying to figure out what she actually means. Hmm. What, well, I don't know. Do you feel like she's being honest? About Megan, yes. I do believe that Megan is safe. Well, shit. But well, they're not all together. Yeah, then they're not all together. That doesn't make any sense. Oh my god. One of my questions was, or one of my borderline insistences was that if I take on this role, that you know, I want the, I want to know whether or not the sisters can come back out of hiding. If if, if it's, and of course, there was no, nothing committal from them on that. Um, so okay I mean what are you what are you gonna do like what do you want to do that was one of Patricia's questions to me what do I want and um, I told her the one thing that I want more than anything else and have wanted more than anything else was is a family and uh, she <clears throat> we spoke briefly of my past choices with Shoban which be thankful you never met her <laughs> She 
seemed to indicate that I already have one. You do? Oh, oh, okay. Um. And then, yes, we're fucked up and we're broken and we've got a bunch of shit wrong with us, but that's part of family, which is... Yep, that's true. Most families. Of, part of why I called you guys here. And apparently... Johnny, it feeds directly into your missive from Oscar. What if Oscar and Trish are colluding? They're just working us over. God, this, this whole city is just completely wreck. I can see why you guys were like shady about when we first introduced each other. Uh, because we got secrets. Yeah. Well, everyone's got secrets, and their secrets got secrets, and their secrets have more secrets. Some people's secrets are much darker than others. Yeah. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, that sort of information is power. Of course, some people feel that all information is power. All right. Okay. So, here's the thing. If... And maybe I'm, I'm I'm leaping here, I'm grasping at straws, as they say. But Sydney was being protected. Her and her daughter were being protected by somebody on Olympus. And there are few individuals who fit the category. And maybe Trisha knows or was one of those people. If she's protecting Megan, she has the means to, to make other people disappear safely. But that stopped for whatever reason. And now Sydney's dead. And I don't know if her daughter was remained safe or not. Um, I don't I don't know. But I'm going to start pulling apart people's lives if I cannot find her daughter. And I try to say that as calmly as I can without losing my shit right now. So the presumption was that it was Phoebe's body. Because her clothing was found directly next to the body parts that were left behind. But the head was found in a separate location and it does not appear to be of the same body. Did you see the clothes? Yeah. Were they the same clothes that she was wearing at the gala? Was there a piece Precisely. torn out? Oh. We didn't check for that. I don't know if there but... was a torn piece. I no, can you have pictures? Eric. No, it was, it was a torn piece from one of the skull's jackets, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so. Shawnee, you said that there was something, something you did with the skulls, right? Some fight you got into with Malcolm? Oh, no. Malcolm and uh, his friends beat up Manny. But uh, the skulls kind of know who I am, though. Why? Well, okay. So the night that we had our huge argument, I kind of blindly uh, ended up at the docks, and I don't know how I ended up there. Uh, and I ended up in the underground fighting ring and I knocked a bunch of people out. Oh my god. And then then, then I had a, a daydream, I guess, of a whirlpool slowing down. And it makes my head hurt when I think about it. And it makes me kind of angry at the same time. Normal family, normal family. This is normal, totally normal. Johnny, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, what happened to you was more than likely whatever your power is taking control. Oh dear. It right. wasn't you. What? It was whatever it is, whoever it is, that makes you as strong as you are. Your leprechaun. Oh, leprechaun? No, Remember the not, leprechaun story? Was, I have a leprechaun. Cal has metaphor. Lepre yeah. We're all leprechauns. Yep, yep, yep. In a way, yes. 
Okay, so I guess. Okay, it's fine. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. You know, you got your uh, you got your aggression out in a um, slightly normalized fashion, and um, we're good. Everything is fine. You didn't. Well, all the gangs know me, and probably part of the underworld. Yep. Still not fine. Okay. Oh, before I forget, Geo. Um, we don't have to worry about Julia Sable anymore. Oh. No, she's dead. Wait, what? She's Who's dead? Julia Was this Sable. the woman that you were talking about from before? Yeah, the one who murdered Gerald Walker. Yeah. Well, how'd she die? Wait, uh, whoa, whoa, did the cops know that she's dead and that she was the one who... Are we gonna, are we gonna tell the cops? No, we're not gonna tell the cops. Are we? <laughs> Shit. Okay. Um, you know, you guys make it really hard for me to do this whole, like, straight and narrow law thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, hey, listen, we didn't kill Julia Sable. We no, didn't kill but- Julia Sable, right? No, we didn't. Wait, who killed Julia Sable? I don't understand. Okay, who killed two? Okay, Julia killed. Okay, no. Mm-mm. Okay, who I killed need a drink. Julia I need Sable? Drink. Yep, Do- just need a drink. Okay. Julia Sable. Yep. Not too much. Is, is the woman who slaughtered Gerald Walker the day that Geo, Malcolm, and I met for the first time, and fuck him. <clears throat> She is the woman that I have been off and on sleeping with to keep her from slaughtering Geo and Malcolm and me. I got some texts from Rosalind's phone. Uh, somebody else named Anna something. Um asking why I was on Julia's list. And uh, they said that they were, they were, uh, I, I told them, get away from her, don't mess with her, just leave, just leave and. Yeah, yeah, that makes reasonable. She'll get, you'll get your scent and she'll track you down wherever the fuck you go. And, and, and the next thing I know, I get a message saying, Julia's kibble. And. Oh God, uh, so they killed her? Apparently, I don't know if Roz was involved. Apparently, Roz is sick, Ugh. which they don't know what's wrong with her, and I don't know if I could help. But oh my god, this is such a clusterfuck! Wait, who's the person you talk to? Which what? No, the person that texted you for Roz's number. I don't know. I just I know that her name is. Hang on, and he starts scrolling through the thing, and it's like. Uh, she says her name is Seth Anna. <gasps> the ledger. Okay, Johnny, spill. What? No, the ledger. We all saw the ledger, right? Yeah, I know, but... The last know- name on the ledger was Seth Anna Burke. When you just gave the ledger back, didn't you? Well, remember the information. Oh. <sighs> I, I had to give it back. I know. I, I no, no, no. It's fine that you gave it back. Okay. Sable kills Walker. Sable almost kills then killed by Sathana, who was in the ledger that now be- that belongs to the Bjorns. Okay. So what is the Bjorn responsible for all all of this? Are you really sure you know Harold? As well as anyone else. I mean, I haven't slept with him. If that's what you're asking. <sighs> Do you think Harold's responsible for Gerald's death? I mean, do you think he has pillow talk? Okay, no, seriously though, <laughs> Johnny shouldn't even be talking that way at all. Like, you know, I'm, I get it? I'm blaming that. I understand I'm this. blaming that influence on Cal. <laughs> that is definitely not appropriate whatsoever, Johnny. I've seen a James Bond movie, okay? And he's like, you can't fight for and then Yep, it, I'll just tell you that's not how you get women. Doesn't work. Okay. Moving on. I will also tell you that's not how you get women. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Um, so, do you think that Harold ordered Sable to kill Walker because he wants 
control of the foundation? Do you think this is a viable option based on your conversations with him? No. <sighs> Fuck. Man, I was really hoping we were onto something there. I, I think we may be, but I don't think that it's Harold's style if he wants someone dead to send someone else to do it. Especially someone like, which to say someone like Julia doesn't really mean much to anyone at this table except for Geo. So who did she, who, who is important with her? Like who would it be influenced, influencing her? She didn't just do it because she wanted to, right? No, she was paid. I mean, I mean, like not the instinctual I get to kill people thing. I understand that. I'm talking oh, about like almost certainly some of that. No, no. I again, I understand that. Was she tasked <clears throat> with doing this job, or did she just decide that Walker's day was up and that was it? Like that's that's what I'm getting. At. Well, if you look at it from like the mob movies, right? <laughs> if someone on the higher up chain wants someone dead. They don't want it traced back to them, so they'll hire someone else out, like under the table, and have them take care of it, right? So Julia, Julia Sable could have been the person under the table, and then someone higher up could have been Harold, but we just can't trace it back to him. Or, you know, it could have been Trisha. Or it could, could have been, been anybody. Else. Anybody. Literally could, anybody. Yeah. So who has, the, who has the most to gain from his death? Harold? Now Cal. Well, that and doesn't count, because Cal, I mean... <laughs> and so he's a hell of a conspiracy. He keeps scrolling through and he gets to the last message and he says, all right, the last thing she said to me was, Sable is kibble, you're in trouble, deadly trouble, take extreme care and watch your back. The list is already being checked off. Uh, don't be statistic. What? Who, else, who else is on the list? Do we have a list? Can we get a list? This would be nice. Helpful. Can you ask her for the list? Was that a... Was that a threat or a caution? Wait, is Satana trying to kill us? No, I don't get that impression at all. I think all. she's warning us. Okay. This is... I don't... Nope. I still don't get it, guys. I just don't get it. Everybody's killing everybody, and I don't understand what the deal is. Like, There's I'm some killings I can get... But what the fuck is going on? Okay, I've, I've been in meetings back and forth, which is why I didn't get any of your messages until right before I told you guys to come over here. So hang on just a second, and I will read you all the messages as they came in back and forth, and we'll see if we can get all the data all out at one time. So right. the door opens to Santino's. Oh, no. And begins stepping, or in stepping in is an individual dressed in a gray suit. Oh, no. And he steps forward. And a second one steps in. Oh, God damn it. It's the list. They, be they begin to step in as a group. And about eight of them kind of make their way in the front door. And the one that was the lead says, Are you Giovanni de Brossi? De Brossi? De Brossi? Oh, I can't even say these stupid Italian names. Della Rosa? Who's asking? Uh, I'm standing in are front you, of everyone. Are, are we a, are is you, there a window? There is a window. Are you Cal Gannicus? And I'll look over at, at, at Gio and I was like, I don't believe you answered his question. <laughs> I'm done with this. And the four of, or the eight of them move forward. And that's where we're going to end it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say the, the the only thing as soon as like the, the people in gray suit showed up, Johnny knows who they are because he's mm -hmm. seen them in the video. So he's already in front of everyone getting mad. So that's oh yeah, <laughs> I expect this to be one hell of a fight. Oh man! Why are there more questions, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> last week was torture okay and now i could more. see i could see that real just raw confusion <laughs> oh, it's man. time for some answers and you'll get some answers starting next week great great 
So don't kill everybody because we need to question one of these. Because next week is episode 10. Is uh, question now. Are, are, all, yep. next are week, all the men in the gray suits identical? Yes. They like they look the same? All right. They're, so they're clones of... Uh, what's his name? JP. JP, yeah. It's <laughs> JP clones. <laughs> this whole time. They are not stocky white guys and geese running around who are not ninjas. That's a damn. Or crying babies like last yeah, night. Okay, so they dressed up. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Dress for the job you want. Yeah. <laughs> um. God, that was. Fuck. <laughs> I'm I'm so ready for the finale and so not ready uh, at the same time. Um, but thank you guys, everyone here, for joining us for uh, the penultimate episode of season one of Six and Twenty in City of Mist. JP isn't white like you'd know. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't know that he wasn't white. Okay, I'm confused now. I have to go back and reread a story. Yeah. JP's, uh, I mean, you just assumed his race. JP is just, he's I, a I white think... guy playing a white guy. I figured that's what it was. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I will so never. Not everyone's race just comes up in conversation. I mean, you gotta specify I mean, when you're making you know, it. Here. Johnny's an attack yeah. helicopter, so. Yeah. No. <laughs> is that why they call him the Kraken? Yeah. And uh, Giovanni's actually from Brazil, believe it or not. I don't. Well, Morgan's yeah. heritage can be traced back all the way <laughs> to Irish descent, but, you know, Celtics. Uh, I was going to guess South African. Uh, you know, definitely. <laughs> Calvin is Mediterranean. So. Um, but yes, I the mean, penultimate is mightier than sword. Uh, we'll be back next week for the ultimate episode of uh, the 6 and 20 Monop Me Metropolis <laughs> Monopolis. As for Monopolis yeah, 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 Monopoly we're gonna just play Monopoly, it'll be a really good need... time yeah, do we need a Monopoly edition of it? I mean, instead yeah, yeah, of like, yeah. like Park Place and you know no, they have that, it's called Clue those are Clue different games Monopoly. okay, so we're just gonna play Clue on a Monopoly board we're Monopoly on a Clue board? We'll see I'm okay with this <laughs> Uh, tune in next week for whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next week. So let's go around to all of our cast, get final thoughts, and we will wrap things up here. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and start with Morgan. Ugh, I, don't <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Uh, I'll begin with the thing that's easy, which is I met a mancer. You can find me on Twitch, broadcasting tabletop, uh, five days a week, whether it's on my channel or on other people's channels. Um, and Twitter is the best place to get the latest information. Uh, like next weekend on the 22nd, I'm doing a charity stream on my channel. We're playing Tales from the Loop. And it's the first time I've been, I'm going to be GMing and playing in that system in general. So yeah, it's just going to be a grand old time. And information on that is on my Twitter. Um, as for today, first of all, I would like to point out that I spent hours reading about horrible serial killers and FBI data analyst shit today. So my brain is now full of nightmares forever. And I made my own actual like FBI comparable criminal analysis of our serial killer. And now I hate myself <laughs> for knowing the things that I know. So and that's she one thing. Me, and now oh, I yeah. hate myself. And it's like. Yep. No, I had to substitute some words when I was reading earlier because I did use more specific terminology. Um, but for Twitch purposes and consumption. Uh, yeah. So leaving that alone on it. Um, however, today's episode, I I actually legitimately fe felt emotional because I probably already like prepped myself emotionally by reading all these real crimes. And so I was already like on edge um, and, and anxious about that. And then reenacting how somebody who has been on a case that dealt with that would be, I feel, feel very emotionally attached right now. Mm -hmm. um, so there were a few moments where I was like legit shaking because my nerves were so high. 
um, which is good for RP. Yeah. Okay. So other than that, I literally, I just like have so many questions and I could talk for hours about all the questions that I have that I know will not get answered or hopefully some of them will. But next week, um, I think some really big stuff is going to go down depending on what Johnny has planned for us. And if he has certain things that I think he does planned, then I think we're all fucked. Uh, but you know, it's no big deal. It's great. Great stuff. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Gio, for uh, helping a gal out in her catatonic state. You know, I, uh, I do what I can, you know. Uh, and, and thanks, Cal, for uh, accepting his shitty family. <laughs> and accepting. <laughs> I was just about to do that. Yeah. It, was, it was a very touching moment. Yes, yes. Which we all, in character, tried to play down entirely and ignore. <laughs> uh, it was great. Um, speaking of our fucked up little family, uh, Trendane. Uh, yeah. I, I, one of the things about RPing, when, you, when you're that deep in the RP that you're starting to react the way your character reacts, it is something that I had to pick up very early on because... I am much closer to a method actor than anything else. And so I will really get it. I mean, you guys have seen me just start crying on on, on the show. Um, but it is important to be able to think of this character as a costume and you just take them off and you put them in a chest and you close it and you take them out when it's time to play them again. You just learn how to don them and doff them as you need so that you don't carry too much of them with you because that gets fucked up. Um, if you can't, then it is a learned thing. Um, aside from that, I, I very much loved this this episode. Um, there, were, <laughs> there were points where I'm sure it looked like I was asleep. When I was just sitting back like this, I'm like, I keep tilting my head up to see if if... You can see my eyes below the little rim of them. I'm like, nope, okay. So I can just sit here and watch the cameras right there. And just, and just sit there and just analyze. Just crank through what all's going on. And phew, hmm. Yeah. And there's still a bunch of stuff that I haven't uh, haven't finished communicating yet. I mean, nobody nobody as yet. I thought, I thought that Johnny was saying, wait, who's Raj? And then I thought that was coming up. But then he was, he was asking who said that. I went, um... Because I haven't had to explain how Cal knows Roz either. No. Um, Wait, I I wasn't totally sure in the moment, but do the rest of us know who Roz is at all? Is that a name we've even heard? I think she came up briefly in a previous conversation, maybe. Uh, but the thing is, like, there's so much like information for Johnny to like process that like he was like, someone was contacting him from Roz's number. Well, who's that? They killed Sable. He wanted to know who killed Sable. And then he totally like overlooked the Roz thing. I purposely did that because like I, that and Johnny in that moment was like, who's the killer? <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah. So um, all that. And, and as the Bjorns left, I was like, I need to get the other the rest of them in here because i knew you guys were looking for a place to kind of hide out i'm like i need to get them in here this this this, this is where they need to come so i'm like oh, okay fine and i was like this will give us a chance to sync everything up and and really get the ball rolling start you know thinking about everything that's going on as much as we can and then some asshat who shall not be named uh decided to you know throw a uh eight wrenches in the works so um <clears throat> eight broken wrenches soon soon to be uh, yeah. to be fair I'll, I'll throw that at least a couple of those wrenches are credited to the tuesday crew right so is the, the death of julius Sable. right exactly the doozies are responsible for that that's one of the wrenches at least so I johnny only threw us, us. yeah like, I'm muting myself again. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny only threw so, seven wrenches. Right. Um, so yeah, had a lot of fun. Really looking forward to next week. I think it's going to be very interesting, especially given the fact that Cal is not a fighter at all. It's 
gonna wind up at a point where like you guys are engaged with like six of these eight wrenches and then Cal is making out in the corner with two of them. Uh, <laughs> something. Um, it's okay. He can handle four guys at once. It's not a problem. Um, and that's a different story. But the... Um, uh, so I have been uh, Trendane playing Calvin Gannicus, the uh, the satyr, uh, possibly chairman of a major uh, charity group, uh, in Unicorns. Um, and, uh, for those of you who donated to my GoFundMe, thank you. Holy shit. I'm still higgledy piggledy over the whole thing. Um, and yeah, th- th- I think, yeah, thank you. The thing that, that I said, just, yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, at some point, some point, um, we are going to as a thank you for the I just said go fund, go me. fund me thank you that thing uh, we're going to set up a uh, a what a 12 hour stream to, 12 hour to stream. thank you yes where we will cover some <laughs> oh my god what's going to be some pretty cool shit oh my god uh, and for once because it says you know the twitch.tv slash trend and apparently we're going to be streaming it from my channel so it's a good thing that 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 is in there now but that won't be until what next month right yeah we're gonna we'll, we'll announce when we're actually actually gonna yeah. do it we'll set a date and then we'll start uh we'll start the uh the, the big public push on that so so follow me on twitter and you'll find out everything that blah, 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 blah. and um yeah and then eventually someday i'll i'll stream the thing i'll probably just Start tweeting out my stream key so that everybody can have a go at the. No, probably not, McLogan. Where? <laughs> Hello, I'm McLogan. You can catch me in such films as "This Is a Fucked Up Family" or mm-hmm. "What the Fuck Did They Just Say?" or Eight Dudes, One Little Boy Who Wins." You know. Um, so. Um, <laughs> I saw, I see, I saw the trend moment where it was like, he had that thought and then he retracted it. You could see the moment when he retracted it back into his mouth. Um, it, was, it was like airplane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I'm, uh, if you guys don't know already, I'm on this lovely show where I play Johnny, uh, the uh, junior high student who apparently is uh, super good at fighting. Wait, uh, junior high? Yeah. <laughs> He's a I'm, junior, I'm junior in high school. <laughs> Those are different we, things. We've done this before. He does this every single time. I, Guys, you you grew up in America. This shouldn't be hard. They already have. I I am a uh, high schooler that in in his junior year. Um, so junior high. No. Um, no. So, if you are a seventeen-year-old guy in junior high, something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You guys don't know that <coughs> Johnny has been eating paint chips this whole time. Um, so, <coughs> oh my God. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, you guys, uh, Thursdays, you can catch me on this little show uh, where I play Johnny. Uh, and tomorrow, I will be on MetaBancer channel uh, playing in a uh, dark heresy campaign where I play Archeo, the Arbiter for the Lord Emperor. And uh, uh, then Saturdays, uh, I record a fantastic show called Beyond the Mist. Uh, next week, I don't know what we're going to do next weekend, but uh, I have to see who we're having on the show still. So I'm, I'm getting that down. I've been busy with the secret things I've been doing. So, <coughs> um, And then Sundays, I play, I play Sarge. Sergeant Buddy Fisher uh, on a Call of Duty campaign that's a uh, Metal Mask channel and he likes to talk a lot and gets himself in trouble and uh, he's afraid of cats. Uh, so, and then uh, and then uh, all the way into uh, Wednesday uh, where I do my own D&D campaign IDM Chosen, which is a uh, Final Fantasy uh, D&D uh, mix-up uh, that we do uh, starting uh, at 7 p.m. Central on my channel, Twitch.tv. You guys can follow me at McLokin on Twitter and for tonight's show uh, I thought it was a lot of, I thought we, there was a lot of story that we found out and then there was a lot of questions where I was like what the fuck's going on <clears throat> what did, take. yeah uh, my yeah my, <laughs> my spit take was great because I was like uh, as soon as he said that I was like grab your water bottle take a sip 
and then do the spit take into the trash can you have next to you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I was like, I was, yeah. Uh, but I think, uh, I think it's cool that like, we all realize that we are like the Roseanne family, the bar family, uh, from the TV show where we realize, you know what, we're fucked up, but you know, we're our own kind of fucked up. Um, so, and then investigating the murder scene and like thinking out the Freon thing was just like me thinking out of the box. I was like, what, what do you need to run a freezer? Freon. Who filled this fucking Freon? Because after 10 years, you can't just turn that shit on and it's going to work. Uh, so they had to do some sort of maintenance on it. And most modern places don't use Freon anymore. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. this is an older system. So that's a, that's why I was like kind of going the Freon route. Uh, but yet we haven't laid out all their clues in front of us because I wanted... Uh, uh, Cal to smell that plant and be like, what kind of plant is this? And then he can smell it uh, and then be like, I'm going to take this at home. No. So I was, I was wishing that I was <laughs> at the crime scene so that I could get, get, the, get any scent that might have mm -hmm. been left over of, of the dude with the van and then started looking at it. I was like, well, I'm not there. I can't say anything. Well, I have a few things from there that you can be like, oh, there's, but now, now we get to see Johnny fucking beat up the eight dudes. Uh, Cause he, I, it's literally what I'm going to have him do. Um, he's in fight mode. So he's, uh, he's going to run in there and protect everyone. Um, unless Morgan murders all of them. But I, I think We'll say Morgan is really upset right now and has nowhere to uh, focus her anger until now. So yeah. I'm just gonna go out the window. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, was that I was waiting for the as soon as he started mentioning with the okay, I'm done with this, and he started coming forward. I was just gonna immediately turn to Meta and go, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, I, th I think this is a moment where. Uh, yeah, like a lot of things are gonna happen. I don't know how many there are uh, per se. I don't want to kill them um, just for the fact of what's described to me. When uh, I think in the earlier episodes on one of the other shows, uh, what like Flicker said she killed one and then two came back, and I was like, so we'll see if this uh, if this uh, multiplies. Where if we kill one. Does two more show back? And then I'm blowing up the building while they're still inside of it. And I'll make sure they stay inside of it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that was an awesome show. I loved it. Uh, I loved uh, I loved the dynamic and I love uh, how things are folding out. I just really hope we get answers next episode because I'm super worried. Because we're, as far as anything, I think we're the only ones working this case currently. Um, as far as far as I've seen from the other shows, so we're not off in imagination land, or or fighting uh, cat women and beating them to kibble. Beating, beating them to kibble? Are you kidding? He <laughs> lacerated them or lacerated her <laughs> in a sarcophagus. In a, <laughs> just thorns are going to just <laughs> like, ooh. So the question is: is when you kill a rift. What happens to the mythos? The mythos goes to someone else, correct? Part of that was actually answered uh, on Tuesday's show. Okay. So I had a conversation with Leah Sable mm -hmm. okay. after she was dead. So there was there's a little bit of a clue of what happens, and that's exactly what will get answered very soon. Oh, I can't wait for the finale. Oh God! Oh no, no, that that's a season two thing. I'm not even worried about finale. <laughs> Johnny, I swear to God, because <laughs> it's not directly related to what's going on right this second. So you're right. Going. You're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, well, let's turn things over to to Video Star Cowboy. Tell us about your channel and stuff. I guess. Uh, I'm Johnny Video Store Cowboy everywhere except Twitter where it's 15 characters so it's Vid Store Cowboy ridiculous as usual uh, GM for 6 and 20 uh, I do this 3 nights a week over my channel on Tuesdays for the Tuesday crew formerly known as the Doozies the Wednesday crew Team Lazarus who were fighting pirates 
and reanimating Puff the Magic Dragon, but we won't get into that until later. Um, and then, of course, tonight's crew, Team Esper, who is working the case and had a heart-to-heart -heart coming together tonight, which was pretty impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, some of you in chat, I think it was Chumley was saying, or no, maybe it was Mad Rogue that was saying that you guys haven't actually been in the same room and not fighting for so many episodes, like three episodes, I think. <laughs> so it's it, it was a nice it was nice to see the family come back together, and that's one of the things that I was hoping to encourage through the various means of the Bjorn family, since they are clearly a dysfunctional family that knows what what that means. Um, yeah, you guys did amazing tonight. Uh, again, the 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 meta stuff or meta your your stuff from Morgan. Uh, I just I'm still reeling from it all, and I'm still processing, and I can't wait to include even more of it um, as we move the story forward. Um, I just want to know: Is next next week? Am I going to have to face my nemesis or not? Oh no! No 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 no! Okay, thank fucking god. Bishop is definitely not going to make that level of an appearance. Okay. Okay, we're good. Every everything's fine, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll only like kill half the city this time. It's his his mad plan might get initiated next week though. Yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> yep. We're fucked anyway, but you know, less fucked. Or more fucked. I mean, it's really your perspective on the whole issue. So I I'm, I'm going to be fairly blunt about this particular thing this crew has a couple of things in play that could definitely change the game literally based on what happens next week one of them obviously is Cal becoming responsible for the <laughs> Walker Foundation the other is not so obvious but will still be good and I'm going to leave you guys on that Fuck you, Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> come on. You know you like it. That's yeah, why you come I'm, back I'm with, more. I'm with him on this one. <laughs> I'm not admitting. I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> right. You're not like the passionate guy who keeps running a show for us on the you know on the weekends, right? Yeah. <laughs> Volunteered <laughs> to do so. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Uh, yeah, this episode was great, and I cannot wait for the finale. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, before we head off for the night, uh, let me just give a couple announcements or whatever. Uh, make sure you do follow, uh, as was uh, mentioned by Johnny, follow 6 and 20 on YouTube, um, where you can catch Beyond the Mist and see all the cool behind the scenes stuff and learn more about the System of City Mist as a whole. Uh, also, uh, check out uh, the YouTube channel for this um, for this channel, where you can actually watch the episodes. And uh, make sure to follow 6 and 20 on YouTube. Uh, or, on sorry, on Twitter, the other thing. I already said YouTube words. Um, where you can do all that other stuff. Uh, and also, uh, if you haven't bought this amazing game yet, do it. Uh, it's by a company called Son of Oak, and when you buy the core rulebook and PDF, you can use the coupon code 6 and 20 fan to get $5 off at purchase, and it is totally worth it, because it's such a good, beautiful, thick book, um, and you definitely want it on your shelf um, for yourself. I don't think you saw his smile when you said, or Cal smile when you said thick, so you need to be careful there, buddy. I noticed I, it, because I looked yeah, over as soon as Listen, I, like, I didn't look it. But I assume how, <laughs> like, how thick this book is. I so was thick. partially distracted by the fact that every time that that fuck his name Speedy is is talking about these things and you get to him typing the, the URL and some of the commands, every time he hits enter, he does this thing. <laughs> <laughs> he does this little flourish at the end. And yeah. At the beginning of the show, when he was doing it, I started cracking up when I was watching it, and then I forgot all about it until he started doing it again. <laughs> It's that's a just flourish. that's just I how know. I yeah I got to do with a flourish I gotta I I gotta know. emphasize this is the point when I'm hitting enter. Showman. Also, showman. showman. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take a weakness tag otherwise. Um, uh, but other than that, I don't believe we have any other announcements coming up. Um, other than to just make sure you tune in uh, next week to the finale on all three channels: Video Store Cowboy, Unmade Gaming, 
and not so speed runs. Um, and we'll go ahead and end this off with a raid. Um, I'm gonna send some love over to a guy who I met at PAX East this weekend. A uh, real cool guy goes by Data Dave, um, and he is a uh, he, he streams a lot of like Pokemon shiny hunting. Currently, he's streaming some Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Yeah. Uh, and he's a real cool guy. I uh, had the opportunity to hang out with him over uh, a lot of meets at Foga de Chao. Um, so uh, definitely go check him out. Uh, let me get the actual raid thing going. There it is. <laughs> You're enjoying that turn name. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, so that is all that we have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, it seriously has been a super fun time. We will see you all next time. And as always, don't forget to take it slow. Bye.